Need to hit the road if we're gonna beat the traffic. All right. All right. What? 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 Uh-uh. Maybe we'll just beat the traffic tomorrow? Our roof got damaged during Hurricane Ida last August. When I went to start researching different roofers in my area, I was overwhelmed. The wait was incredibly long. The bids were outrageous. Then we got on Angie. Next thing we knew, we were put in contact with our Angie Pro. It was just insane how quickly things went. And then that weekend, they came out. They were there for a day, day and a half, and we had a brand new roof. Got a home project? Get started at Angie.com today. is a power five school big 12 here they come it's the kent state golden flashes taking on the knights of ucf so glad you could join us this is gonna be a lot of fun we are kicking off college football everywhere across the country with my partner devin gardner i am eric collins uh, with the new year everything is new from program to program we're gonna Talk about UCF and their move to uh, the Big 12, that's huge. But we're going to start with Kent State, where virtually everything, Devin, from soup to nuts, is brand new. Yeah, everything is new, especially on offense. They return zero starters. And when we talked to the coaching staff, they said this is the most opportunistic offense in the land because there's a lot of opportunity out there. And it starts with their quarterback, Michael Olimo. He's a guy that's got a lot of talent. Came out of high school as a four-star quarterback. Back. Big talent, but didn't have a lot of reps. Only threw 359 passes to this point, including including high school. Eric, you never get a second chance at a first impression. Tonight, he'll get his first impression. The other extreme, how about UCF? They've got a quarterback who's a returning starter. How about that? John Rice Plumley was good last year. They expect him to be great this year. Absolutely. And they're no spring chicken to the newness either. They have two new coordinators, but the one question mark they think they have answered is John Rice Plumley. He's a guy who a year ago was just learning the offense, figuring out where guys line up. And this year he has a much better handle. He worked in the summer and spring figuring out how to have better footwork. He's going to put that footwork on display tonight. One of the best athletes in all of college football. Let's do it. College football kicking off in Orlando. We've got two schools looking to start a new chapter. Kent State, UCF, our kickoff in a moment. Subway refreshed everything, and now they're slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the new Subway Series subs are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Have you been behind me this whole time? Yep. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway, like the Subway Series menu. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. For free. That's what I'm talking about. Order in the Subway app today. No one can take better care of your child than you can. But when they start getting into everything, you may need a little help. So Duracell created the only lithium coin batteries with a non-toxic bitter coating to help discourage swallowing. Making safety simple and giving you more peace of mind. That sizzle? That's the soundtrack of Chipotle. The soundtrack of Chipotle? Oh yeah. You come in, you're going to be hearing that sizzle. That's how you know that we always have fresh food. Fresh is what you stand for. That's exactly. Your paint is really bad. What? I said best coffee I've ever had. Should have used Bear. Sorry, side wear. No, I said should have used Bear. Today, let's paint. Right now, get America's most trusted paint brand at a new low price. Bear, only at the Home Depot. Let's do it, everyone. UCF Knights running onto the field as a Power 5 program. They're going to take on the Kent State Golden Flashes FPC Mortgage Stadium in Orlando. Rain throughout the course of the day, but everything is sunny right now for this UCF program. 
They are a Power 5 program. They've been at a bunch of different conferences. The MAC Conference USA, most recently the American Athletic Conference. But now they are a proud, full member of the Big 12. This is a school that just opened its doors in 1963. Now they are the youngest school in terms of years with their doors open and teaching classes in a Power 5 conference. Gus Malzahn now in his third year looking for his 19th win. He'll be matching wits with Kenny Burns who is coaching a game at the college level as the head coach for the very first time. Yeah, he's got a great opportunity and we talked earlier about his quarterback getting a chance at a first impression. He gets his first impression as a head coach with his team. It's going to be exciting to see him play. Well, UCF, they won the toss. They're chomping at the bit. They want to receive. They'll get the football. Stadium is rocking. Here we go. Uh, no chance for a return. It'll be a touchback. And UCF will start on offense. Take a look at their lineups. We start with the big guys. Some transfers on the offensive line. Absolutely. Three of the five are new guys. Smith, Metcalf, Marshall. Marshall, who actually played at Kent State a year ago, an all-conference player in the MAC. We got R.J. Harvey, one of probably four backs that we're going to see. He's going to be the main guy to begin our game. They really like Baker, Hudson putting up numbers, Xavier Townsend. All those options right now for John Rice Plumley, who is his second year starting quarterback. Eric, you know I love a runner and a thrower. The same way I used to play, he has explosive ability with his legs and his arm. Can't wait to see it. Flushed out of the pocket. First play of the game, a pass. It is complete. Xavier Townsend picks up 13. Eric, I love to see a team come out and do what they said they were going to do. What they worked on in the offseason, him being able to be accurate on the run, they showed on the first play. New offensive coordinator, but classic Gus Malzahn. Quick to the line, and a run of about two yards, maybe be three on first down. That's important for the viewer to know, Eric. For so long, we know Gus Malzahn, as a great play caller, he's relinquished those duties to Darren Henshaw and allowed him to take over the play call and do the set. It was just a little too much. In the Cincinnati game, it came to a head and said, I need to allow somebody else to call the plays. Tight end Alec Holler in motion. And it's going to be back-to-back -back running plays. R.J. Harvey to the 44. He'll be shy of the game. And it's a pickup of four. Third down is short. You can see that they're trying to play with a lot of pace. And remember, Gus Malzahn loves a power running game. So this is not a team that should just throw the ball down the field every single play. On third and three, they want to pass it. Plumlee, great wheels. He's got the first down. That's where he's dangerous. And for Kent State's defense, I think they're going to have to find a way to put a spot early. Right now, find out who's going to be the guy that follows Plumlee around, especially in those short third down passing situations, because that's something that can happen every single down with his superior athletic ability. On third and three, they pick up five. Again, Holler, the man in motion. Third run of the game for Harvey. His best run of the game. He's down to the 37-yard line. 14 yards for R.J. Harvey. Holding, number 60, offense. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Whoops. First negative, that's Derek Anderson, our referee. They call the holding penalty on Drake Metcalf. One of the transfers, he's the center, came over from Stanford. What Kent State did there, they did kind of a twist, right? They got a twist, and Metcalf just didn't recognize that somebody was coming around, so he tried to grab him late, and that's what allowed the running back to get through the hole and pick up such a big game. So wipe away the 14 yards for Harvey. It's first down at 20. Little pop, inside handoff to Marcus Bowman. First chance he's got to touch the football, and it didn't fool Devin Nicholson. Nicholson, the transfer from Missouri, that's only a gain of three. He's looking to be a tackling machine for this Kent State defense. They talked about him as a big get, a guy that can play from sideline to sideline. Played at Detroit Cass Technical High School, big time high school in Detroit, Michigan. Went to Missouri, but now finds himself with an opportunity here at Kent State. Three grad students start in the defensive backfield for Kent State. Miller, Shepard, and Blue. Designed quarterback run. Look at Plumley scoot. Woo! John Rice Plumley showing off that athletic ability. We were told that maybe more of a passer than a runner this year, but throw that out the window. A gain of 16. Third down and short. 
Harvey has the first down. Now first and 20, no problem for UCF. They pick up the first down. Up-tempo offense. Slant, caught. Townsend. Second catch for Townsend. Down to the 13. It's a very nice job. Just a basic in route. Uh, in, 10 yards and in across the field. Very nice job by Plumley Getting the ball perfectly on target. I hope Kent State paid attention to their offseason conditioning. They're getting just run rough shot right now. Quick pace for UCF. This time, Caleb Johns on the tackle of Harvey. What you can see is UCF is getting everything they want in the running game and the passing game. And Kent State feels that they have to add more guys into the run to make sure they not only stop Plumlee, but the running backs as well. And that allows for big windows in the passing game. And that's why you saw Plumlee able to complete that pass with, it seems like, no defense. <laughs> R.J. Harvey leaves the game. He's replaced in the backfield by Johnny Richardson. Where's number zero? Plumley to the end zone. Incomplete in the direction of Javon Baker. A chance right now for Kent State, their defense, to catch a blow. Third down at six. Remember, down here tight in the red zone. The legs of Plumlee are really, really in use right now. If he doesn't see what he likes, he's going to create and move, not just to run, but he can run to throw. 11th play of the drive. Plumlee. Caught. Touchdown. Townsend. UCF leads 6 0. That was an impressive drive. About as seamless as it goes, very nice job of Plumlee dropping back and allowing it to shake out. Outside, you're going to see when we get another angle that the receiver comes underneath and he's wide open. It's just an option route. He can go in, he can go out, but he turns around and hooks up and does a very good job. Plumlee puts it on his numbers. Touchdown. Colton Boomer, returning kicker. Center cut. So a wonderful intro as a Big 12 member for UCF. The Knights take the opening kickoff and march down the field for seven. Plumlee just drove down the field and, and all the things that he wanted to put on display, put on display, standing in the pocket, navigating the pocket, getting out and running when he has to run. He does a very good job on that, on that drive. And I wonder, can he continue to play at that pace, especially with the receivers and the running backs? 11 plays, 75 yards, 4 minutes and 4 seconds. Now UCF last year, a good club. They were 9 and 5, 6 and 2 in the American Athletic Conference. They went to a bowl game, the Gasparilla Bowl. They beat Florida in their bowl game. But a whole different level of expectations now that they're a member of the Big 12. Eric, what I really liked about that last pass play by, by John Rice Pumley, there are guys all around his feet. He has the opportunity with those explosive legs to get out and run, but he doesn't. He stays in the pocket, knows there's no real imminent danger, and drives a nice throw on the receiver's numbers. Boomer's kickoff is short. Fielded at the two. Oh, my. State will start their offense on the 23-yard line. Krishan McCray on that return. Take a look at what they did here. They went here, they go here, and then he had the option to go in, out, or just hook up. He does a very good job there of getting behind those guys, and those defenders just lift, just lift, just lift out of the way. He's wide open, and, and John Russ probably could have gotten to him a second earlier. Very nice design by that coaching staff. Here are the uh, starters on the offensive line for Kent State. Andrew Page, you highlight him, Devin. Absolutely. A, a freshman, right? You don't see too many freshmen get an opportunity, especially at that center position. He's the guy that's going to be making those mic calls, but he's going to have some help from those guards. Skill positions. We're going to see a lot of different running backs, but we're going to start with Gavin Garcia in the backfield. He'll be behind Michael Alimo. Redshirt junior from New Jersey. He started his college experience at Purdue, a highly 
decorated high school player. Big time get when he got to Purdue. Yeah, absolutely. And he played at a high school that was very, very run heavy in New Jersey, right? So that's why he didn't have all the passing reps that you see a lot of guys get. But now he has his opportunity. He's the guy. He spent time at Purdue. He's the guy now at Kent State, and they really believe in him. First offensive play, they give it to Garcia. And Garcia gets to the 26-yard line. Garcia, a returning player. Sophomore, Pennsylvania native, won four state championships as a high school player. Picks up four yards. Back-to-back -back carries for Garcia. Lugs it out close to the 30. John Seliscar. We're going to talk about him quite a bit. One of the great leaders on this UCF team. Pro prospect. Gain of two. It'll be third down and four. Did a very nice job there of playing that Q power, right? He has responsibility to the quarterback, and then after the ball is clearly given, he runs laterally down the line of scrimmage to make the play and create this third down. Alimo desperately wanting to stay on the field and a flag. Pre-snap penalty. False start, number 75, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. It's the freshman. Andrew Pace getting ahead of himself there. There's your UCF defense. Talked a little bit about Seliscar. Linebacker, they really like Jason Johnson, the fifth-year guy from Chicago. Tackling machine, 126 tackles, 10th in the country a year ago, 70 solos. Third down and nine. Alimo can't get his first pass off. He goes down. Ricky Barber with the sack. Can't ask for a better start for UCF. A touchdown first time they have it. A three and out forced by the defense. It's a very nice job. You got Ricky Barber making the play, but the play is made there, and they come underneath. Very nice job of these defensive linemen. First, you're going to get the pocket push by Lee Hunter. Push, 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 and then a spin move around the back for Ricky Barber. Josh Smith barely got his punt off. Crosses the 50, gets to about the 41-yard line. It's a punt of 40, and it's going to be UCF on offense when we come back. They already lead 7 to nothing. Welcome to the Big 12, Knights. Baby, it's over. I mean, we both saw this coming. What a difference a day makes. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvogue. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill, once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. I'm the team mascot. Boy, am I running late. Ow, <laughs> what a hit. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to cover that might tank your season. <laughs> So get all state and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Wendy's new breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. I got that sauce biscuit and some Tay-Tays. Eggman and Saucy Boy. Two hot coffees. No matter what you call it, Wendy's breakfast is that breakfast. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Well, what can UCF do for an encore? Their first time with the football, pretty darn good. And it was on the arm and the legs of John Rice Plumley, the dual sport athlete. I mean, he worked on a lot of things in the summer and spring, 
with new offensive coordinator Darren Henshaw, and you can see it on full display, executing, figuring out where he needs to go with the ball, running when he needs to, and finishing with a touchdown. Plumlee, the senior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Look at him with the shake. He's out across the 50, down to the 43. Man, he is a difficult man to bring down when he's in space. Kent State flew their linebacker out with the running back, right? So you have an option. You can throw the swing pass to the running back, or you can take it and run the quarterback draw. Kent State's linebacker follows the running back out. Plumlee takes it right up the middle and for a big game. Gain of 17 on first down. Plumlee actually ran for 1,000 yards as a freshman quarterback at Ole Miss many years ago. Designed quarterback keeper again. This time it doesn't fool Kent State. Alex Branch came up from the safety spot to make the tackle. It's a nice job by Alex Branch. I mean, this is a guy who's very tough to get down in the open field, and he does a very good job of staying disciplined, staying in his area, and then coming up and shooting that near hip. As a defender, you have to remember, the sideline is your friend, right? Get that butt to the field and push him out of bounds and make the tackle. Handoff inside Ron Richardson to the 36. Nicholson with the tackle. It'll bring up third down. So an opportunity for the Kent State defense. Remember in the passing game, on these third and short situations, you have to remember, John Rice Plumley is a threat with his legs. You can't just fly linebackers out. You have to have a guy to be a spy. Looks like it's going to be Nicholson. Oh, movement on the line. Who moved first? Both sides pointing at each other. Kent State. Offside. Number 14, defense. Went into the neutral zone, creating a reaction by the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Oliver Balot. And it'll be a first down by penalty. The second time that's happened so far for UCF. It's a nice job by the offensive line. Lyman stand, holding their water, and waiting for the Kent State defender to react. Plumley continues to throw a really good ball. Kobe Hudson, his first catch. Capone Blue with the tackle. It's a very nice job. You got the inside receiver clearing out, and then Capone Blue on the outside on the hitch route. Very nice job of processing by John Rice Pumley. He looks inside and then quickly drives the ball outside. That's something that he worked on, getting that, that throwing shoulder, that front shoulder to the target. He does a very good job there and drives the ball right through, and that's why he's throwing a nice ball today. Plumley five for six so far passing. Hands it off. Harvey bangs inside the 20, mauled at the 17-yard line. That's good for another first down. You're going to get the tackle to C.J. Harris. Another quick snap. Plumley keeps it to the edge. Plumley touchdown, UCF. Outside and now it's nothing but green grass and a guy that runs 4-4-2 in high school, I might add, he's going to get to the end zone every time with that much space. So it's an early 14-0 lead. Six plays, 59 yards. 14-0 UCF over Kent State. Caleb Williams has transferred to Wendy's for the new loaded nacho cheeseburger. This burger is my inspiration. And I just hope to inspire you. Oh, you have inspired us. Thought we were doing names on the headband. Get it together. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new loaded nacho cheeseburger. So yeah, USAA, they always have my back. USAA? You were in the military? Oh no, I wasn't, but my grandpa was. He joined USAA, passed membership to my mom, then to me. There's other ways to get in? Yeah. My neighbor, Ron, he's in because his wife served. Even little Luna, when she's 
born. Her dad served. So all this time I could have had USAA insurance. And banking. Where's my phone? <laughs> <laughs> Over there. USAA, for the military community and their families. On season six of Fansville by Dr. Pepper, things are heating up. Mom, Dad, I have a girlfriend, and she likes college football. The stars have arrived. I've made my choice. This season, I will be drinking Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. And everyone wants a taste of fame. Welcome back to Chuck's Take, because every fan needs a podcast. To get a thick color, I use two coats of maroon. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. I love your nails. Thank you. It was our first time in Kyoto. Oh yeah, it was a whole new thing for us. We stayed in a room in Takashi's home. We told Takashi that we wanted to go to a nice sushi restaurant. He was like, I can teach you. <laughs> I think that's where the sushi party started. It was so funny. You got pretty good at it. Yeah, I think I'm quite talented. <laughs> <laughs> What a great start to the season for the senior John Rice Plumley. He just ran in a touchdown from 17 yards. He is already rushed for 54 yards, and he is second to only Jaden Daniels, LSU, among quarterbacks running the football. I think he's going to finish tonight and kind of jump Jalen Daniels. And, you know, obviously Daniels will get a chance later in the week, but I think he's going to jump on tonight the way he's playing. But you got you got to know this guy, John Rice Plumley, is a guy who – is a dual sport athlete, right? He has baseball, but when we talk to his SID and the coaches, they say he is all in on football. He wants to make this the best year possible, and if he continues to play like this, it's going to be just that. He's got tools. Kent State, second time, they'll have the football. Touchback. All right, Devin, what do we need to see out of Kent State this time with the football? which you can see from the previous drive, they can't handle UCF up front, right? They can't handle the big guys in, in the middle, Lee Hunter and Ricky Barber, number five and number two, respectively. They have to find a way to get Alimo on the edge. He's a guy that's not, he's not a statue. He's not the, the Lamar Jacksons of the world. He's not the quarterback on the other side, but he can move. Get him on the outside, allow him to see some different pictures because I don't think he's going to be able to move and navigate within the pocket comfortably the way they're playing right now. Ball to 25. Alimo drives it down the field. He's got a man. Wow, some good speed. This is McCray. And McCray down to the one-yard line. Krishan McCray actually got hurt on the opening kickoff, but he's back in the game, and he's got the biggest play of the season. Eric. Nine minutes into the game for Kent State. Eric, take a look at this fake. Look how long this ball stays in the pocket. It's riding. It's riding. He almost takes it. The defense has no idea where it is, and it's a prize. There it goes. Very nice job and a well-designed RPO, right? That's a true RPO. But a lineman got down. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Game clock operator. Please put five minutes and 50 seconds on the game clock. Legal man downfield, take away the 74-yard gain. So, Eric, you have to know, in RPOs, the longer you hold the ball in there, the longer it's going to take those linemen. They're blocking a run play. They're trying to get downfield and move guys down the field. And, yes, he is five to six yards down the field trying to block. I mean, that has to hurt because you look like you execute the play so well, but it's executed too well, and that's why it's so wide open. Yeah, it's called a Nolan Rumler transfer from Michigan. So instead of first and goal from the one, it's first and 15 at the 20. And that is a catch at the 30-yard line. That's Luke Floria, gain of 11. On the very next play, that's why I talked about, Eric. Oh, another remember, flag down. Remember, that's why I talked about get him on the edge and allow him to make plays outside of the pocket. Personal foul, roughing the passer. I hit on the quarterback, number three. 15 yards added to the end of the run, automatic first down. Tremont Morris Brash called for that penalty. And an extra 15 to boot. Good things happen, Eric, when you get on the outside, you make some plays. And, and the thing is, it's going to get those defensive linemen, those big guys moving east to west. Here's just where it's going to happen. Ah, I, I, I don't love it, right? It looks like he moves his head out of the way, and it looks like he hits him, but... Steal 15 extra. 
Another catch on the perimeter. This time the catch is made by Trell Harris, his first catch of the year. But look how soft the pressure is, Eric. One time you get on the outside, you make a, a significant play, and now you have much more time in the pocket to do the things you want to do. Pickup of 12 on first down. Back to the ground, Garcia. Stoned by Walter Yates. That'd be something if Kent State could uh, dust himself off a little bit after that crusher of a penalty. Nullifying a 74-yard pitch and catch. Second down and eight. Ricky Barber here is giving real problems to his offensive line. Again, wants a big one. No chance at all for Harris. Eric, when you're a wide receiver, you have to leave a five-yard buffer when you're running a go route. And, and what I mean by buffer, you have to run five yards from the sideline so that it allows the quarterback to fade you outside. Remember, the quarterback is in the pocket. Those linemen are in the way. He can't truly see downfield. And so he fades you away from where you are. Well, if you run right up the sideline, he's going to fade you way out of bounds. And now the quarterback looks like he threw a bad pass. That, that play is on the receiver, Harris. Third down and eight. Alimo, the slant, that's Harris. He's got the first down. Kent State showing me something. First drive was a disaster. Down 14 nothing in the first quarter. They've come alive here. That's a gain of 13 to Harris. Bad snap, doomed. Blowing it up, Tremont Morris Brash. Second down. Garcia's the only running back we've seen for Kent State. Four carries, just six yards. UCF looks like they're in a cover four defense where all the defensive backs have has fourths of the field. They can't attack on the deep post. Eighth play of the drive. Alimo. Harris, third catch of the drive, but a short gain. It'll bring up third down. I like it a lot. Kent State is not afraid to attack in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Harris is doing a very good job of running routes, excluding that one go route. He does a very good job of snapping down and racing back to the quarterback to create this third down. Xavier Williams has come into the game. He's the back next to Alimo. You got man-to-man -man coverage across the field. UCF's probably going to bring pressure. They bring five. And the pass is incomplete. Trying to sneak it into Jameel Gardner. It's fourth down at seven. And they're on the outskirts of field goal range. They may just go for it, Devin. I mean, UCF is very excited about Brandon Adams, the defender on that play. He's a long cornerback, six foot three, 180 pounds. And you saw his length there. He can be in position and then reach that long arm in. But like you said, Alimo on this offense is going to go for it. Fourth down at seven. Kenny Burns, aggressive, his first game as a college head coach. UCF stays in that man-to-man -man defense. You can see the noise is a factor. They're trying to relay a message. And they call a timeout before the play clock expired. Trying to get the play in and get it relayed to the offensive line. They're struggling because of the noise at UCF. Welcome to the Big 12. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. No matter where you're headed, with the right view, 
the right co-captains, and stunning American design and craftsmanship. You might not care if you ever get back. Experience loyalty like never before with Wagoneer Client Services. Worry-free maintenance, dedicated customer support, and exclusive VIP service. Hey, how's it going? Good. What's with the sandwich names? Oh, they're just nods to my time in the Army. Oh, but what's the Steven named after? Steven is from Navy Federal Credit Union. They've been helping with my finances since I enlisted. You want another Steven, Steven? Keep them coming, Hannah. <laughs> okay. Maybe someday I could get a sandwich named after me. <laughs> no. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. If you have moderate to severe Crohn's disease, SkyRizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor that can deliver clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Control of Crohn's means everything to me. Ask your gastroenterologist about SkyRizzy. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. 318 remaining in our first quarter. Kent State's down 14 nothing, but they've got the football and a chance. Kenny Burns, big time decision here. Last year, remember, all different staff, different players, but last year, 50% uh, of the time they went for a fourth down, they converted it. This would be a 45-yard field goal. He's taking the offense off the field, and he's going to send last year's all-conference kicker, Andrew Glass, into the game. So trying to break the seal here and get the first points of the season. This is a 45-yard field goal attempt for Glass. Is it going to get there? It does. Wasn't a thing of beauty, but it counts for three. And those are the first three points of the season for the Kent State Golden Flashes. They're back in the ball game. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu, snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie. They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's back. Applebee's all you can eat boneless wings, just $12.99. Welcome back, everyone. Orlando, Florida, FBC Mortgage Stadium, UCF different level of excitement these days as they are entered into the Big 12. Nine play, 49-yard drive for Kent State. Ending with a field goal by Glass. And they're within 11. They're going to have to get the football back, though. And UCF right now looks unstoppable on offense. Plumley passing, Plumley running. Everything's working. Johnny Richardson back deep. Along with Xavier Townsend. Low skimmer. Oh my goodness. Directly out of bounds. That's a mistake. So Glass just made a field goal. And then he makes a boo boo. Free kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. It's an extra 10 yards, just a gift. Yeah, you just can't do it right, especially the way that UCS offense is executed. Game clock operator. Please reset the game clock to three minutes, 20 seconds. Thank you. All right, take a look at the running game. Already 89 rushing yards for UCF. That's Plumlee and 
R.J. Harvey for the most part. We did see one run by Johnny Richardson. But that's a big number in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that wants to run the football. We talked to a new offensive coordinator, Dar Darren Henshaw. He said, let's not kid ourselves. We're going to run the football. That's what Gus Malzahn wants to do. And remember, Henshaw had a 1,700-yard rusher at UAB a year ago. Here's Harvey Nicholson on the stop. We thought Devin Nicholson would have a chance to be a, a name we called out a bunch, and that has been the case here in the first quarter. Well, I mean, obviously, Eric, he's a Detroit guy. Name so he's Devin. Gonna make, <laughs> name Devin, right? He's going to make some plays. But in all seriousness, he's the guy that's tasked also with being the spy, the guy that's have to, that has to watch John Rice Plumley when he's getting in the run game. So he's got a lot of duty to work today. Played 39 games in the SEC with the Missouri Tigers. That's some experience. It's a very light box. Got to be a run call here. Plumley indecision doesn't cost him. Plumley making something out of nothing. Look at this kid go! Wow, what an athlete! John Rice Plumley, that play looked like it was doomed for disaster. He was supposed to hand that ball off, Eric, but a playmaker makes plays. He pulls it out and it creates something, like you said, out of nothing. 32 yards. Plumley's pass, little comebacker, caught by Townsend. And to run that far, right, and, and it's not just the yards he ran down the field, he ran laterally, then had to cut across, and then be able to have the wherewithal to go back to your technique. That's what Coach Henshaw wants him to be able to do. Be a runner and then be a quarterback when you need to. Richardson to the 21. And we've got a flag down on the field. Holding, number 71, offense. 10-yard penalty, we play second down. Returning starter, Tylen Grable. Georgia native called for the flag. All right, take a look here at this mastery by the quarterback. He's supposed to hand it off there, and then he sees there are guys everywhere. Guys coming, coming, coming. So he gets out of there and makes a play. And, and just telling you, big-time players make big-time plays. You have to make the coach right when things go wrong. He makes the coach right there. The wraparound handoff. Down to the 30. They're playing behind the sticks. It was second and 13. That's a gain of eight. So to bring up a third down. Again, Nicholson in the thick of things. Flying, sideline to sideline. That's why I described him as when we were doing the lineups, and he's showing that right now. Plumley lost the football. And I think Kent State's got it. Is that the first mistake of the game for Plumley? It is. It is, and I think the Kent State got it back. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Kent State. First down. So Plumley finally makes a mistake, and it costs him the football. Watch the effort, the effort, the effort. Effort is what's going to make plays. C.J. West does a very good job. He's being blocked. He's falling down, but he just reaches his hand out, and just by the hair on his chinny chin chin clips the ball and this is why ball security in the pocket is so important it seems like guys aren't close to you but then they are and when you have one hand on the ball the ball can be knocked out Kent State's got it so Kent State not only did they score the last time they got the football but they get the football back away from UCF without the Knights scoring look at that effort right he doesn't even see him he just knows he's somewhere around he swings that big paw up and it just happens to hit the ball and now we get another opportunity to see Michael Alimo 62 seconds remaining in our first quarter. Williams trying to push that pile. He does it relatively effectively. It's a gain of five yards on first down. Xavier Williams is a, a graduate student, Forceville, Maryland. He started in 2017 with Kent State. He's been here nonstop. This is his seventh season. He's had a couple of red shirts and injuries and all that other kind of stuff, but seven years in Kent, Ohio. He's been there for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> He's had some chili at Rays before. Second down at five. Slant caught first down. This is McCray. McCray's the one who had the 74-yard reception overturned because of a penalty. He picks up the first down, gaining 13 yards. UCF is selling out to stop the run, and this RPO is 
chopping them apart. Very nice job of McCray. The patience of his slant route, right? He's not just flying into the middle of the defense, right? He takes time, and then he gets in, and Alimo puts it on him. Kent State's moving. They got an opportunity. It looked like UCF was going to run away and hide. That's not going to be the case. 14-3, second quarter when we come back. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. You've earned this, so hold it up high. You're not just a store clerk. Thank you. You're a line cook, tour guide, lifesaver, sometimes therapist, but always there from open to close, a one-person operation that's the heart of the neighborhood. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Is this your plan to watch the game today? Uh, yeah, I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan, but you know what it is? My plan from Verizon. Switch now and they'll give you NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on them. This plan is amazing. Another amazing plan? It's backing away from here very slowly. Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us, a $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, only on Verizon. Start of the second quarter, UCF leads Kent State 14 to 3. UCF just fumbled the football, gave it back to Kent State. And Kent State's kind of building the momentum they had last time they had the football and got that field goal. You can see quarter numbers. Good golly, look at the total yards for UCF. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty lopsided, but Kent State has found their groove. They understand what they can and cannot do. They're still using the run game, but using that RPO, as you can see here. Alimo flings it deep. A little bit of contact, but not excessive. Trell Harris was the intended target. It's second down and 10. That's tough for Trell Harris. He takes the inside release on a go route. If you do do that, you got to make sure you stack. Get on top of the defensive back and make sure the quarterback can get you back outside. He stays inside, so there's really truly nowhere to throw the ball. Xavier Williams stays in the game in the backfield. They move Hayden Junker from one end of the line to the other. Alimos pass is caught. This is McCray. He's got the first down. So what an eventful first half for Krishan McCray. Remember, he got hurt on the opening kickoff. Had to be helped off the field. And he's been on the field here a lot and caught a bunch of passes ever since. It's a very good job of seeing that you have a receiver taking that outside third defender out and you can get into the flat quickly inside run down to the 34 yard line the Limo's doing a very good job of recognizing coverage and seeing what he's getting and getting the ball out quickly he, he watches the defense he sees a retreat corner and he knows he can get that quick out route from the slot if the safety doesn't react quick enough a Limo looks the part let's say it's 6 4 225 yeah the Purdue transfer Again, looking for a bunch. Nobody home. Again, running up the sideline, right? That's another opportunity for a different receiver that's running up the sideline. The quarterback cannot fade you away from the defender because there's not going to be a whole bunch of separation, right? You got Kent State versus these talented, long defensive backs of UCF. There's not going to be a whole bunch of separation, so you have to be able to create that separation with the throw, and you just can't do it if you're running right up the sideline. Golden Flashes have attempted three deep shots. Haven't hit on any of them so far. Third down and eight. This is close to where the last drive stalled. Pressure. Alimo, he can run for it. He's got the first down. Alimo on the scramble. It's a nice job. 
So UCF defense stays in that man-to-man -man defense, and when you're man-to-man, -man, everybody has their backs turned. You can watch. Alimo's going to drop back. He's going to survey the field. He starts to feel the pocket collapse. He climbs two hands on the ball, and then he sees all the backs are turned. I'm not Lamar Jackson, but I can go get this first down. Nice job by Alimo picking up what he can get. Ball's on the 26. Another shot. This is the fourth deep shot, and it's still yet to pay off. Now, remember that space I talked about with the wide receivers on the outside? Where you, when you run the inside receiver on a fade, that space is created, right? You create that space by the play call, and now you see it's almost a perfect pass and allows the receiver to get at least one hand on it. First game, haven't really seen each other in this arena. I think by the second half, they're going to connect on some of those deep shots. Nice play in this drive. Alimo currently the leading rusher for Kent State with nine yards on the ground. Xavier Williams wrapped up by Lee Hunter. Number two tackles number two. No gain. I mean, that's a really nice job by Lee Hunter. Hit, extend, and then he just throws the guard off of him and makes the play inside. Lee Hunter, 6'4", 320 pounds. Again, his college experience at Auburn. Third down and 10. The slot fade is an option again with this man-to-man -man defense. Alimo. Incomplete, wasn't going to be enough for the first down. Was looking for Luke Floria. And on fourth down, I'm assuming the field goal, you don't have to be on the field. I love what they tried to do. They tried to go slot fade in and come back to the comeback because they shown it. It just didn't work out. Slot fade and then come back. He's open. Alimo just has to put that ball on him just a little bit earlier. Now he can catch, turn, and go run the first and get the first down. Andrew Glass made a 45-yarder a moment ago. This is a 44-yarder. Oh, my goodness, a doink. Had the distance. Not quite accurate enough. Three points go by the wayside. It was close. A close didn't count in college football. UCF will have the ball when we come back. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. You said close your eyes, don't look down Fall into me, and I'll catch you darling We'll dance in the street, like nobody's watching It's just you and me, and the song of Celebrate every kiss Get zero down special financing with the K Jewelers credit card Great, but on this next take, I'm gonna need more speed. More speed. More speed. More speed. Miles, we good on sound? The best performance is high performance. Get offers on select vehicles at the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is coming to the biggest season opener college football has seen in years as his Colorado Buffaloes face 17th ranked TCU. Big noon Saturday on Fox. Starts this week. Be exciting waiting all year for that, huh? Coach Prime. And Coach Prime would not be riding that Buffalo. <laughs> I saw the video when he met that Buffalo. <laughs> John Rice Plumley. Fourth time with the football, and this is the first time he just had to throw it away because nothing was available. Plumley had been six for seven throwing the football. He's already rushed for 84 yards. Remember the last time UCF had the football, the drive ended with a fumble by the quarterback Plumley. A season ago, this Golden Flash defense, they play a lot of man-to-man. -man. 
And, and you saw on that play, they did a very good job of locking up the UCF receivers, and John Rice Plumley had nowhere to go with the ball. Plumley designed rollout. Pass is complete to Hudson. And Kobe Hudson close to the first down marker. It's going to be third and short. It's a gain of eight. UCF, the first two times they had the football, they were going at warp speed. Yeah. They fouled the back a little bit. Yeah. First game with uh, Darren Hinshaw, his offensive coordinator, calling the plays, which is a big deal. UCF has one of the best offensive minds in Gus Malzahn. Start. Offense. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Third down. Gus Malzahn, everywhere he's been, has called plays, and he is considered to be an offensive genius, but yeah. Devin, he's no longer calling plays, which is taking away a strength, you would think. Yeah, I mean, he said that it's something that he had to do. So the new age of college football with NIL, he has to almost be a CEO, and he just can't have shoulder responsibility to put together game plans and making sure that he calls the plays. He said his team will have a better chance if he's not. Plumlee's pass on third down is caught. Townsend with the catch. Big chunk play, and it's going to be a first down for UCF. Love the route of uh, uh, slot fade kind of variation. Gets vertical, steps on the toes, gets outside, and then Plumley puts it right up the seam. Back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Incomplete looking again for Townsend. Pass too high. Plumley now has 98 passing yards and 84 rushing yards. How about this catch? Just sneaks that ball right inside the arm. That's good defense. You can't cover it any better than that, Eric. But a very nice job of reeling that ball in. By number three, Xavier Townsend. That's a gain of 33 yards. It's now second down at 10. Harvey. Didn't fool anyone. That's Josh Baca from Ottawa, Ontario, making the stop for no gain. You got to remember, in this first game, both teams are finding out about their teams. They don't know who their guys are, who's going to be their stars, who's going to help them on defense. That's a backup in Josh Baca coming up and making a nice play. Third down and 11. Man to man across the board. You can see they're exchanging responsibilities of safety in the corner. Wraparound handoff. This is Richardson. Oh, it fools Kent State. And he's going to be close to the first down marker, just a little bit short. He needed 11, he got nine. Devin Nicholson again on the tackle to stop him just short of the first down. I wouldn't be surprised if UCF didn't try to go for this, though. Offense still on the field. UCF, they've got a good kicker, and a flag is down. They may get him for a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, number three, defense. Oh my goodness. Added to the run, automatic first down. The guy named Devin, Devin Nicholson called for the face mask. Looks like it could be on both sides though, right? Uh, I don't I see it. it both sides. I, I think it's it. on one side, I think it's on UCF side. No, oh, there it, there it is there. quick. There it is quick, right there. You can see him grab the face mask, but <laughs> He's also getting his face mask grabbed there. So a first down via the penalty for UCF. Down to the 11-yard line. That's Johnny Richardson, who has split time with R.J. Harvey here in our first half. Yeah, this Johnny Richardson is lightning the bottle. When asked about him, Plumley said, Johnny in space, when he's got the ball in his hands, you should probably press record on your phone because something special is going to happen. <laughs> Five minutes into our second quarter. UCF scored touchdowns the first two times they had the ball. Fumbled it the third time. Keeper, Plumley. A physical run for your quarterback. It is. He's listed at six feet, 200 pounds. Yeah, and expectations at UCF this year. You just can't be running too much of a risk with your quarterback. Yeah, and that's one thing that they pointed out as we have a player down, looks like Baca down the field. But one thing they pointed out about Plumlee, they wanted to take some hits off of him. 
because last year he took 192 hits, and that's just way too much for your quarterback. We're going to be back with UCF still driving. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. Important moment for UCF. They are marching once again. They've got the ball inside the 10. Had a timeout. Josh Baca was being looked at. Kent State safety uh, took the worst of that hit with the quarterback Plumley. Yeah, left leg kind of landed a little awkwardly. Uh, he just did not expect for uh, Plumley to lower his shoulder. Look at this. We've got a Wildcat situation. Jordan McDonald is going to take the direct snap, not Plumley. This is McDonald inside the five, down to the two. Battle of sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia. That's his first touch of the football this year, and he picks up five yards. Before we went to break, I talked about the, the desire to take some of the hits off of Plumlee, and that's a way to do it. Put in the Wildcat, even though you have a dynamic runner at quarterback, put in a Wildcat running back and allow him to run that, essentially a quarterback power from that Wildcat position. Then do it again. Plumlee's still out of the game. McDonald, almost an identical play. Takes his time, waits for Richardson to go by, runs it up the gut for a touchdown. So a little wrinkle there for the UCF Knights as they score their third first half touchdown. It's a very good job. You got Poole here coming around a lead up. He's going to go right on through untouched into the end zone. It's a nice job by the right guard, number 71, Lokahi. How Ole. You like that? You've been doing your work. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm impressed. Yeah. Extra point. Squeezes through. And the lead is now 21 to 3. So a good offensive start for the UCF Knights in their debut as a Big 12 member. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis takes you off course, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once daily pill. When I wanted to see results fast, Rinvoke delivered rapid symptom relief and helped leave bathroom urgency behind. Check. When UC tried to slow me down, I got lasting steroid free remission with Rinvoke. Check. And when UC caused damage, Rinvoke came through by visibly repairing my colon lining. Check. 
rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid-free remission. And a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Rinvo can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how Abvi can help you save. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. The fight for the postseason is on. Bryce Harper and the Phillies going to take on Christian Yelich and the Brewers. Bryce Harper was 300th homer just the other day. Or Carlos Correa leading the Twins against Corey Seager and the Rangers. Catch the action Saturday night at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. You big baseball guy? Yes. Big baseball guy. Yes. Uh, did you play? A little bit. I never, got I never played in the big leagues, Devin. <laughs> but no, I'm a big baseball guy. Big baseball guy. I should have tried. I should have I been a pitcher. Huh? You still into handball? Weren't you doing that for a while? Hey. Over in nice. Bulgaria or something? <laughs> Touchback ball will be taken to the 25-yard line for Kent State with Devin Gardner. I'm Eric Collins. We've got uh, Michael Alimo making his first collegiate start. The transfer from Purdue. Uh, underneath, he's doing just fine. Big shots, not so much. Inside 20 yards, he's been uh, masterful, I would say. But let's not forget, three of those four 20-plus yard throws are goal routes where the wide receiver leaves him no space to throw the ball. So I would not put those on him. And then he has one in completion where the ball is just outside the fingertips of the wide receiver. So in, in my estimation, Michael Alimo is playing very well, especially for his first start with not a lot of reps. Kent State, brand new offense, brand new offensive coordinator, 11 new starters. They've gotten into the red zone twice and come away with just three points. That didn't work very well. Sean Peterson with a nice play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they tried to get him on that quick naked bootleg where you don't block a guy and try to sneak a tight end into the flat. They covered it perfectly, and he just had to eat it and minimize the damage. This is something I talk to young quarterbacks about all the time. Sometimes the, the defense has a better play, but minimize the damage. He keeps it at second and ten. Alimo, that's a little sidearm flip. Is it complete? No. Trying to get it to Jameel Gardner. It's third down at 10. It's the first time we've seen Alimo throw from a different angle. And it looks like he snuck it in there, too, but again, the length, the length of the cornerback. Brandon Adams, six foot three. I mean, it's just so tough to get throws in, especially in that man to man defense when he's so close and he had great athletic ability as well. Kent State trying to avoid a three and out. They're standing there man-to-man -man defense. Alimo again with a sidearm toss, and this one's off the mark in the vicinity of Luke Floria, but it's going to bring up fourth down, and the punt team will come on. It's a very nice job by UCF's defense because they show man-to-man -man at the start. In post-snap, they go to a cover six, which is cover two to one side, where a safety plays half. You have a corner in, in the flat about five yards from the ball, and then to the field they play in a cover four with overhang linebackers underneath those throws, so it makes it very tough to get the ball in there. Very nice job by the new defensive coordinator, Addison Williams. Josh Smith, the Aussie kicker, has to go high for a bad snap and maybe affected his boot. And that is not uh, something you can write home in Australia about. It actually crossed the 50 and then hits the brakes and a little juice and it comes back to the 48. Go back out. Call it a 24-yard punt. John Rice Pumley, he's had one mistake, but for the most part, he has been special. He's done all the things that we knew he can do, and we, he's done all the things that we thought he would do from the things we talked about with the coaching staff and the things he worked on. But his ability to run the football is going to open up this offense a, a, a great deal. But that fumble is the one that gave Kent State an opportunity. Obviously, UCF did not have to pay for it because they missed the field goal on their ensuing drive. But... John Rice told me as long as he protects the ball, he's playing very, very well. As you can see, the stats very efficient in using his legs and his arms. First down carry, Johnny Richardson. We've seen Richardson, we've seen R.J. Harvey, and we saw Jordan McDonald as a goal line quarterback. Two consecutive carries that resulted in six. I mean, they told us 
They've got five running backs, and we're gonna <laughs> and we're gonna see them all. I love the balance that UCS offense is playing with, though. Right, you, you got a runner in your quarterback, but your other runners are contributing, and, and obviously the pass game with Rice Plumley. Little pop pass. That's Bowman. Demarcus Bowman. Only the second time that Bowman, the sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, has touched the ball. Real speedy guy, 5'10", 190 pounds. Gain of two. It'll bring up third down and four. This pace is drastically slower than we saw early in the game. Third down at four. Harvey made the first man miss. And he's not going to get to the line again. He's going to bring a fourth down. C.J. Harris on the tackle. C.J. Harris does a very good job. He's going to be the unblocked guy right there. Shooting that gap. You would love for him to get him on the ground there so they kind of remove the opportunity to go for it. But you can see that they're changing personnel and they're bringing in their big guys and they're going back to the Wildcat. McDonald back in as the quarterback. Again, he keeps it third straight time. He's kept the football out of that formation and he's got it up for the first down. The game be predictable, but it works. The game of inches, though, right? If C.J. Harris is able to make that play, I don't think UCF goes for it, right? I think it's a little bit longer than they like. They punt the ball away. Kent State gets an opportunity, but because he doesn't make the play right where it is, it allows them to bring in the Wildcat and pick up that first down. So Plumley back out. We're looking at Gus Malzahn. He's not calling plays, folks. First time you can say that about a Gus Malzahn team in a long time. Yeah, I mean, he was a little uh, taken aback, too. Like, yeah, I can't believe it either, man. Richardson gets to the edge, makes something out of nothing. Positive first down yards. He's got some really good balance, right? That looks like he should have gone down on that initial contact, but he doesn't and finds a way to get a few more yards up the sideline. They give him six. Richardson stays in the game. This time they fake it to him. Plumley. Push for the pocket, has to throw on the run. Oh, a bad idea. It's picked off. Nice play. It's a pickoff. It's DJ Miller with his hands on the football. Second mistake for UCF, but there is a flag down. Was it after the play? Holding number 72 offense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is an interception and a touchback. First down, Kent State. Marcellus Marshall, the former Kent State Golden Flash, commits the penalty. It's declined, and it's a turnover number two for Plumley. When we come back, Kent State's got the football. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. I told myself I was okay with my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. With my psoriatic arthritis symptoms. But just okay isn't okay. And I was done settling. If you still have symptoms after a TNF blocker like Humira or Enbrel, Rinvoke is different and may help. Rinvoke is a once daily pill that can dramatically relieve RA and PSA symptoms, including fatigue for some. It can stop joint damage and in PSA can leave skin clear or almost clear. 
Renvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Renvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Done settling? Ask your rheumatologist for Renvoke. And take back what's yours. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Welcome back. John Rice told me just turned the ball for the second time, and this is how it happened. You had cover four defense by these safeties. They had force to the field, and then you have that hook-to-curl player playing underneath. Now, John Rice told me it's not there because you got eyes on the quarterback in zone defense. They're driving. They're driving. They're driving, and now there's nowhere to go with the ball. But that's why you have those legs, Eric. You have to use your legs. He creates, he creates, but then he just throws a lollipop, and an interception is made. Very nice play by D.J. Miller, Jr. in this Kent State defense. We're having an issue with the lights. During that last timeout, they actually intentionally turned the lights out, and they're doing something with little camera phones. Timeout on the field. We're going to wait on the lights. <laughs> so I, I think what they're doing is trying to do the whole effect of, yeah, we got our lights like a, like a concert almost. Yes. But then the lights didn't come back on as fast as they thought they should. So we're going to have to wait just a little bit, let these lights get fired back up. You can see there's only one right now. You got that one on the left that just came on. But we got to wait on that whole section up there. That whole section is struggling. Huh. Okay, yeah, this is what we were trying yeah, to accomplish nice. during that uh, last time out. Very nice, but just like an old gym, the lights just don't come on as fast as you want them to. You need them to come on like a light switch at home in the bathroom. Felt like I was at a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> Taylor Swift. I haven't been, but I've heard it's amazing. Oh, my goodness. I haven't been either, but I paid for it. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone in my family went without me. <laughs> well, this is the very first game for UCF as a member of the Big 12. Uh, and a couple of glitches. That's okay. It's to be expected. We'll be back in a moment. Okay. Who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. I have moderate to severe Crohn's disease. Now they're sky rizzy. Things are looking up. I've got symptom relief. Control of my Crohn's means everything to me. Control is everything to me. Feel significant symptom relief with sky rizzy, including less abdominal pain and fewer bowel movements at four weeks. Sky rizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor for Crohn's that can deliver both clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. The majority of people on SkyRizzy achieved long-lasting remission at one year. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Ask your gastroenterologist how you can take control of your Crohn's with SkyRizzy. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Let's talk Kent State football. They have had some really big names over the years. Did you know Nick hey, Saban hey, played hey. for Don James as a player? Jack Lambert. Oh, the scowl. Wish he was smiling there. James, James Harrison. Harrison undrafted to the Defensive Player of the Year in the NFL. Julian Edelman was a quarterback yeah. when he was at Kent State. We didn't even put a picture of Antonio Gates up there because oh, he yeah. actually never played football he played at Kent State. He was on the Kent State basketball Where's team. Where is he from again? Uh, I, I, I'll just tell you since you don't want to say he's from Detroit. De Detroit. That's right. How about this? You love Detroit. The, the A large chunk of the band Devo went to We Are Devo, D-E-V-O. They are Kent State grads. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you always say stuff like this, and I have no idea what you're talking about. But that is, I will, I'll take your word oh for it. That is pretty cool. I have no idea who Devo is. Maybe just you back to the 80s. I don't know who Devo uh, is, but that seems like a really cool piece of information there. Mother's ball. <laughs> Big time music guy now, producer. Every movie you, you got, he was behind it. All right, our lights are back on. Golden Flashes want to keep this football as long as they can. They don't want to give it back to UCF before the half. That's a gain of seven yards for Gavin Garcia. 
That's the best run of the day so far for Garcia. He's carried the ball five times now. Alimo, play action. Ball flutters, and it costs him. He was looking for McCray, Braden Marshall on the coverage, and there is a flag. Yeah, he didn't look back to find the ball. He's making a lot of contact, and I imagine they have to get it for pass interference here. Pass interference, number four, defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That is on true freshman Braden Marshall. Because this is a UCF game, we have to mention he is not related to Brandon Marshall, huh? One of the best receivers uh, over the last two decades in the NFL. He played at UCF. But he did train with a former UCF DB for UCF fans, Drico Johnson, right? So he's got some relation, but you can see here he's got hands on, balls in the air, never looked back to find it. You got to call that for pass interference every single time. And that young guy has got some talent. They're excited about him, but he's got to find a way to look back, find the ball, and he might be in position to have an interception. That's the fifth deep shot taken by Penn State. First time at XE resulted in positive yards. Garcia. That is John Selisgar with the tackle. Second down. This, this coaching staff loves Selisgar as a leader, as a teammate, as a guy who is a weight room warrior, a guy that has guys follow him. And, and he's such an effort guy. He said a lot of his plays that are made is from effort. And they said the one thing they want to see him improve on is just have some real pass rush skills, right? Some real, because he, he gets to the quarterback, he makes plays, but it's just the effort that's really making it happen. And that's something he worked on all summer. Final four minutes of our first half. Garcia, nope, undercut by Selisgar. That's a defensive end who is big time involved in stopping the run. That's a loss of two. How about working all summer? You go underneath and, and, and kind of gamble here, right? Because you're the protection on the edge. You're going to set the edge here, but you go underneath, you see it's a run, and then you're there before you can even make him play if you're Garcia. Third down and eight. Big play for Kent State. They want to stay on the field. Remember, they've liked that slot fade, but look here. At the top of your screen, your wide receiver, he's not lined up on the sideline, so maybe he can get vertical and hold some space on that sideline to throw that deep go route. Alimo caught. He's got the first down. Trell Harris just wanted it more than anyone else. That is a big play for the Golden Flashes. That's a nice job by Trell Harris. Just a hitch route. Just a hitch route, and you lift the coverage with that slot fade. You got a slot fade in the inside, hitch route from Trell Harris. He catches it, move, move, and then he finds a way to try to get at least close to the first down, out of bounds. but he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds before the line to gain, and it's fourth down. Kenny Burns, what are you thinking about? I think he's thinking about a timeout. This is a big time decision for a rookie head coach managing his first game. We're going to find out a lot about Kenny Burns right here. Fourth down and one. Do you go for it? Do you give the football back to a hot UCF team? No, no, no. This drive is going way too good. I, I think you go for it here. Uh, you come into this game outmatched, right? You don't know exactly what you're going to get from your team. 11 new starters on offense. I say put the ball in their hands, especially the way they're playing. They're not backing down from this UCF defense. I say put the ball in their hands. Allow your quarterback to get on the edge. He's proven. He can move his legs and go pick up first downs. Put him on the edge. Allow him to make a decision to throw or pass. Or throw or run. Mm. Throw and pass. Yeah. Same thing, obviously, Eric. <laughs> Michigan My <guy>. goodness. <laughs> it's okay. You're the worst. All right, so it's fourth down and one. Kenny Burns making sure that he knows all the particulars. Born and raised in Springfield, Illinois. Kenny Burns. Looks like he's talking to the referee and saying, hey, we're going to try and draw him off sides. And if we cannot get him off sides, we're going to go with a timeout. And, and, and in that timeout, I don't think they should still find a way to get the best play that you can get for two yards or, or whatever the case may be to get a first down. Hold your water. This is the comment. Hold your water. Don't move. That's what he's telling these guys in the huddle. I say go for it. I say go for it. As Make well. a statement. Burns was a running back, which is somewhat rare among head coaches. And yeah, they're in the review right now to make sure that he was short. And, and we believe I think he I think he was just a bit short. All right, this is the catch made by Trell Harris. He goes out of bounds with his right foot. I mean, it's a great. It's so close, right? You can't. It's, it's tough to see with this angle, 
but he's he's very close. But I have a friend that can help us out with this. Dean Blandino making an appearance on the first week of the season. How you doing, Dean? You have a best friend, not just a friend. Come on. <laughs> of course. Come on. We're closer than <laughs> of that. Of course. So what they're doing right now in the replay booth, they're combining a couple of angles. They're looking at that end zone shot, which clearly chose the right foot out of bounds. And we'll get the announcement here. Runner made the line to gain. It's a first and 10 for Kent State. Then they take that, go to the sideline shot and get a spot. And obviously they determined that he did make the line to gain. How amazing is technology, Dean? Wow. Dean, thank you so much for that. That is a big time break for Kent State. So Kenny Burns, we don't need to see what was in the saddlebag. No decision to make nope. here. First down and 10, 242 remaining in our first half. Touchdown here will go a long way to put some smiles on some faces for the guys from Northeast Ohio. Empty backfield. Alimo by himself. Five options on the perimeter. Alimo wants to throw, don't want to run it. Clearly didn't want to run, and he's tackled with the line of scrimmage, but it could be a face mask. Yeah. Lee he Hunter him. got him up high. Oh, my. I think he definitely got him, and it was because of the slip by Alimo. Alimo. He slipped, and he kind of his face kind of fell into the hand of Lee Hunter, if that makes sense. Wow. You saw Celescar on that play. He gambled again, right? He came inside. There's no foul for face mask on the play. He had the collar. Second down. Lee Man. Hunter catches a break. That would have been unfortunate, right? Because like I said, he kind of fell into his hand. Watch here. You're going to see a Limo come. He's, trying, he's like, oh, you're a big guy. I can set you up. But he slips. Oh, no. And then he fall. Ah, he might have got six nuts a little bit. But then he got, got the collar. All right, so the clock is moving. Let's see how Kent State wants to play this. They could burn a whole bunch of clock off if they don't want to give the ball back to UCF. Nope, they go quickly. Alimo, another deep shot. This one a good chance caught. Picked off the Jordan mask. Oh, it looked like the receiver had a step, but the pass didn't make it all the way. Mask with an interception. receiver and snatched it so that's the first turnover committed by Kent State only saving grace is the ball can be spotted at the six yard line let's see if UCF is going to be frisky they've got a long way to go UCF they do have all three timeouts Big shot there. Zelaskar, who's been everywhere. Richardson in the backfield next to Plumley. Richardson. So nothing at all on first down. Clock continues to move. You can see this defense is playing inspired. It, initially, they were getting gashed in the run game with, with Plumley and the running backs. Timeout, Kent State. This is their second of the half. This is a but they, second timeout. But they really buckled down and found a way to get after Plumley in this run game. Kenny Burns wants the ball back. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Show, Deion Sanders unplugged. That's going to be fun. Colorado TCU preview. Biggest sleeper this season. And plenty more. It's good to be back in the saddle, Devin. It is. Love me some Thursday night football. Well, Thursday night. We're watching a uh, history uh, in the making with UCF. 
Gus Malzahn, when he took the job a couple of years ago, knew that there was something special in Orlando. And it's actually less than a two years from today that they accepted the offer to join the Big 12. It's a really fast turnaround to jump into the Big 12 and become the newest school in terms of opening up its doors, 1963 for UCF, as a Power 5 member. Very, very young institution to be in a Power 5 conference. Richardson with the catch. Gets out to the 14-yard line. The helmet came off. Yeah, Caleb Johns, that's, that's bad because he's going to have to come out for a play. And he's a guy that's really done a very good job in helping in this run game in the short pass game. Third down and two. So Johns leaves, waiting for the substitution. All right, we got 11 on the field. Let's do it. Third down and two. I think you got to put the hand, the ball back in the hands of John Rice Plumley. Allow him to make a play, make the decision. Will he run it? Will he throw it? But I think this decision needs to be his. Wow, what the kind of handoff was that? Real goofy handoff to Richardson. They've got the first down. Creative ball handling with the left-handed handoff. This is just that sprint draw. You sprint right just like it's a speed out, right? Because Kent State is thinking the same thing. I'm going to get quarterback on the edge. Oh, no. Hand the ball off underneath, and it's just a draw. Ball handling's kind of cool. First catch of the game for Alec Holler, senior tight end from Winter Park, Florida. Clock stops, 115 remaining in our first half. Plumley now over 100 yards passing, knocking on the door of 100 yards rushing. Eight carries, 88 yards on the ground. Caleb Johns back in the game. Kent State is in that cover four defense at the top of your screen. If you can get a deep curl here with a post on the outside, you will have a nice opportunity to get the ball driven down the field. Plumley, the dump down. Richardson stays in bounds. Spun down at the 31. And a timeout is called. 104 remaining in our second quarter. This time it's UCF calling the timeout. Kent State has done a very good job of mixing up their coverages. And, and for UCF, if you catch them in that cover four coverage that they had just then, and, and when I say cover four, four defensive backs split fourths of the field, right? And if you take receivers vertical, it turns into a type of man-to-man, -man, right? So you take the number two receiver in the slot, take him vertical, that makes the safety play him man-to-man, -man, and it allows for a lot of space for that corner to cover outside with the receiver on the outside on a deep post. Blitzed in terms of total yards. They've got 90 yards of offense. UCF has three times that number, 290. UCF averaging 6.7 yards per play. They need five here. Third and five, R.J. Harvey in the backfield next to Plumley. This looks like zero. Oh, no, they got a guy back deep. You can't really see him. Five-man rush. Plumley's pass is caught. That's Baker with the grab. Now they're cooking with gas. Ball's at the 45-yard line. I don't understand that passive way of playing by Kent State. I know they're probably trying to throw a wrinkle in, but they have their safety back 25 yards, and it opens up the middle of the field in man-to-man -man defense. It's a gain of 18, and it forces a timeout from Kent State. So Kent State now out of timeouts. 54 seconds remaining in our half. You got man-to-man -man defense across the board. You can't even see the, the safety in the screen, right? And it opens up the middle of the field. So it's essentially zero coverage, right? With the safety so far back, you can see the ball's caught, and he's still running from 10 yards away trying to make the play. I think that was a big mistake by the Kent State defense. Remember, this drive started on the six-yard line. After the first play, no gain. It was Kent State that called the timeout. Dreaming big dreams, thinking they're going to get the ball back. Eric. We wanted to show the safety in our all 22. He was outside of our all 22. <laughs> I don't understand why he was so far back. A 
Okay, so Kent State out of timeouts. UCF still with two. UCF has turned it over twice. A fumble and an interception. It's reverse. This is Townsend. And Townsend down to the 17. Xavier Townsend coming around that end with his hair on fire. It's a nice job by those offensive linemen, right? They got to block down and then get on the outside and get out in front of that reverse. 28-yard gain. Oh. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. It's a touchdown. Alec Holler. UCF just playing too fast for Kent State. Holler right there. He's just going to get vertical up the seam, and there is nobody. They're all this way, this way. There's nobody for him. They're still trying to get lined up, and like you said, they're just moving too fast for him. And Holler's like, Holler, if you me, I'm open. For a touchdown. <laughs> you like that. That's actually not bad. It's a keeper. Eight plays, 94 yards in 66 seconds. What a turn of events for UCF. It's a very nice job of, of Plumlee. Those are the ones you want to miss, right? <laughs> Wide open, you know it's there. Do I throw it too hard? Do I loft it? And, and you can't do either, right? Because you've got these Kent State defenders rallying, trying to recover. He does a very good job of nice touch, and Holler catches it for a touchdown. So a missed opportunity for Kent State. They had UCF backed up at the six-yard line, but couldn't get the ball away. And it only takes a minute and six seconds to go from one end of the field to the other. That's tough. Because right, you're doing so well, you had just got the news that you got the first down, and you're thinking, let's move, chug along, chug a chug a chug. And then you get the uh, amazing play by the safety, the talented safety, the Jordan Mass. And then you get John Rice Plumley who matriculates the ball down the field a great distance for a touchdown. Look at those stats. I mean, he has the interception, he has a fumble, but for the most part, excluding those two plays, he's played a really clean football game, and if he takes away those plays where just a little loose with the ball and, and trying to make something out of nothing too much, he'd be playing a perfect game. UCF's had the football six times. They've got four touchdowns, the interception and the fumble. Low spinner. That'll go through the back of the end zone. Touchback will take it to the 25. And now Kent State without a timeout. 42 seconds. I wouldn't attack. I wouldn't attack, right? You've played this half strong. The score doesn't suggest it, but they played a strong half, especially given all the newness like we talked about in the offense, on the defense with the coordinators and a new coach. Uh, they played really, really tough. I don't see them trying to make a big mistake here and maybe even giving UCF with two timeouts another opportunity to put points on the board and extend this lead before half. And, and you can see they're going to take a knee, the old victory formation. They should change it to a different name when it's before half. Oh, maybe not. Look at Mr. Burns. Try to shake him off a little bit. That is uh, Xavier Williams instead of the fake knee. <laughs> they give it to Williams. A modified fumble Ruski. Gustavo and tactics. They UCF resorted to. <laughs> was ready for it. They were ready. It seemed like there's a little bit too much time to be running the victory formation. Well, the time's going to run out here, and, you know. All right, clock's still running. It looks like UCF is not going to use a timeout, so that will probably be our final play of our first half. I like that, the old Frumbaruski. You don't watch sports movies, so Little Giants isn't going to ring a bell for you, but that's... I remember Bobby Bowden in Florida State with the Frumbaruski. That's all I need to know. <laughs> all right, so that'll do it for our first 30 minutes of play. Gus Malzahn not calling the plays, but the offense doesn't seem to miss a beat. They put four touchdowns on Kent State. 23 our halftime score in Orlando. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? 
Peak what? Peak full. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. H DNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with, and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Tow hitches of the world. Prepare for glory. I can't stay here for the rest of my life. I have had this feeling inside me that I am supposed to be doing something. You'll figure it out. You really take everything? <laughs> Tell me where my drugs are. Welcome to the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome inside our FS1 studios here in Los Angeles. I'm Mike Hill alongside the great Bruce Feldman. We'll get you back out for the second half between Kent State and UCF very shortly. But first, we look ahead to Saturday with our State Farm halftime highlights. And it's a big one on Big Noon. It's Big Noon kickoff returns, and this year promises to be the best season yet as Rob Stone and the guys will be in Fort Worth. Deion Sanders, prime time. It's his Colorado coaching debut against 17th-ranked TCU. Coverage begins at 10 a.m. Eastern Saturday on Fox. Now let's hear from Coach Prime, who's uh, never had a loss for first when it comes to a soundbite, right? As far as this kind of craziness going on with college football. What craziness are you talking about? Well, just different teams moving. Man, I don't care about no different teams moving. Up. We're trying to win, man. Okay, I don't care so what we play. Okay, so I, don't, I don't care what conference, who we're playing against. We're trying to win. All this is about money. You know that. Who ready? I'm ready. Who ready? I'm ready. Who ready? I'm ready. Who ready? I'm ready. ready? Well, give me my darn theme music then, oh. DJ. I really enjoy what I do. I really do. This is not work to me. There's no way you come here and look at those darn windows and I'm on that beautiful field with the mountains. Man, you got to be kidding me. This ain't no darn job. This is a blessing to be out here amongst these kids and leading them in the right direction and posing as their navigational system. It's a blessing to me. It's time! 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 Hey guys, let's go out there and play. Give it your best. Give it your all. Give it your all. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. I don't know how to say it. I wish I could say it in several different languages, but we're gonna win. Look at me. What about me? would make you think that I care about your opinion of me. Your opinion of me is not the opinion that I have of myself. You ain't make me, so you can't break me. Guess what, baby? Oh. It's home. Ooh, it's a lot of hype, a lot of swagger there in Colorado. Dion said he was bringing his own luggage. It was going to be Louis. You know, he got the number one transfer portal. Class of 2022, 2023. Uh, Shador Sanders, his uh, son at quarterback, Travis Hunter, star wide receiver, defensive back. You see all those newcomers coming in for Colorado. A 1 and 11 team, one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in college football last season. So, this season, in its first year, what would you consider a successful campaign? For him and Colorado. Mike, I think Dion has really raised the expectations sky high because of all the hype. As you said, they won one game last year. They were the worst team in Power 5 football. I think if they can win four games, that's realistically a pretty solid year. I think when you look at it, if they can beat somebody in the Pac-12, I think that would certainly help. Uh, I think they have a decent chance to come out of the first three games two and one, and that would get keep the optimism, keep the energy going. What I think they really can't afford to do is get embarrassed in the first couple of games. Obviously, we have them on Big, big Noon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Shador is a big-time player. Jimmy Horn, a transfer from USF, a receiver, really dynamic, as you mentioned, Travis Hunter. Mm -hmm. The things that I think are hard for them, though, is the whole offensive line. All those guys are coming in post-spring. So all these big people that they have, they don't have any time to gel. They're gonna, it's all on the, you know, it's all going to be on the fly. 
So I think as long as they can hold it together, not get too banged up, because it's not a seven-on-seven game, Mm -hmm. I think they'll keep it interesting. They have some firepower speed, but I'm not sure they're good enough to win more than four games. Yeah, we'll see how that chemistry works out. You said two and one in the first three games. Uh, So Nebraska, TCU, they're going to knock off which one? Uh, I like their chances better at home in Dion's home opener against Nebraska. Okay, we'll see what happens there. Of course, only way to go 1 and 11, lost those 11 games by an average of 32.4 points last year. Last year, TCU put together a magical run all the way to the college football playoff before falling in the title game. And now, with stars like uh, Max Duggan, Quentin Johnston going to the NFL, the Horn Falls are hoping for another surprise season. Take a look at the uh, TC Horn Falls, what they were able to do. Uh, a big surprise right now. now only four teams uh, started unranked uh, going into the preseason, finishing in the top five. Two of those teams made it into the college football playoffs the last two seasons, Michigan two years ago. And, of course, TCU made it all the way to the championship game, getting blown out by Georgia last year. So this season, give me a team that may be outside the top 25. That's the biggest sleeper going into the season. I would say watch out for Texas Tech. Uh, it's another Texas team. I think they're picked fourth in the in the Big 12 preseason. Tyler Shuck is a really gifted dual threat quarterback. Zach Kitley is a protege of Cliff Kingsbury. He is one of these offensive coordinators that people are already buzzing about as a, as the next like big deal. They also have a lot of guys on their defense who are big and athletic on on NFL radar. I think this is a really good team. Question is, can can Tyler Shuck stay healthy? I look at them and think Joey McGuire has got people excited. He's brought in a lot of speed. I think they're a team that is going to make a lot of noise in the Big 12. All right. Uh, speaking of the Big 12, let's take a look at the uh, Big 12 preseason rankings as of right now. And of course, uh, yeah, Texas Tech, once again, as you mentioned, uh, predicted to finish fourth. How about Oklahoma trying to turn things around uh, after that horrible season, especially on defense uh, last year to pick the uh, to have finished third in their last year, of course, uh, in the Big 12 Kansas State, which won it last year in Texas. How about that? Uh, 2009, last time they won the Big 12, uh, they are predicted to finish first this year. At the Colorado TCU on Saturday, don't miss 11th ranked Texas hosting Rice. That is at 3.30 p.m. Eastern over on Fox. Once again, Texas. We've been saying this year after year. Is this the year for Texas? And once again, they have not won the Big 12 since 2009. So will this finally be the year that the Longhorns live up to expectations? I think they will get close to expectations, Mike. I don't, I don't think they're a top 10 team. I do think they're a top 20 team. And you look at it. I spent some time around Quinn Ewers, very hyped quarterback there. He's got a lot of arm talent. He is in much better shape physically. And he told me not, not only has it helped – uh, in terms of how quick he feels, but also that he feels like it cleared his head, he changed his diet, feels like it's made a big impact on him. He's got a lot of big time receivers and a lot of speed. Now, he doesn't have Bijan Robinson anymore, and that guy was awesome. Yep. But the offensive line is better than it has been in years at Texas. It was a young group. They're really talented. They're starting to come together. I think they're still probably a year away from being what people are hyping them to be, but I think this will be a really good 9-3 and three kind of team. Five-star players at just about every offensive position on this team right now. See if that all that talent can come together on the start this year. Hey, speaking of talent, last year it was Georgia finishing off a perfect season with a 65-7 blowout win over TCU once again in the national championship game. The Bulldogs claimed their second straight title and now will make a run at the nation's first three-peat. We haven't had a three feet since the 1930s. That's a long time. I, I don't remember that far ago. No, we weren't following Minnesota in the mid 30s. Huh? No, we weren't following. I don't think so. none of us were following <laughs> any team in the 30s. I don't think. Maybe Pereira. Uh, look at the. <laughs> he still looks good for his age, though, right? Great for him. Uh, look at the AP top five right now: LSU, Alabama. Uh, so it's top heavy with SEC and also Big Ten teams right there, as you can see. Give me the biggest threat, though, because Georgia seems like the team to beat going in uh, to this college football season. Which team is the biggest threat to Georgia winning a third straight national championship? I actually think it's the team they smoked two years ago to get to the title game, and that's Michigan. I look at what they have, and this is by far Jim Harbaugh's most talented team. When I saw him a couple weeks back, he told me that we will break Georgia's record for the draft. They had 15 players drafted one year. He thinks they're going to have 20 next draft. He thinks they're that good. The big deal for me is can J.J. McCarthy was terrific against Ohio State, beat them on the road without Blake Corum, but was shaky against TCU when they they imploded. 
if he can take it up a notch, mm. and I think he can because he's got a best offensive line, he's got a lot of difference makers, and they got a lot of leadership on that team, I think they're the biggest threat to Georgia. And they got to get past Ohio State for a third straight year. And, J. Penn, J. State really and Penn State, which is also in the top ten uh, this season to see what happens. College football season, man. We're here. We're ready. That's all for now. The second half between Kent State and UCF is coming up. Enjoy the rest of the game, everybody. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. Honey, have you seen my cell phone? But don't just imagine. My park came to life? Ooh, a plot twist! Use STEM to build. Ta-da! Create. She did it! And change the world. Who's with me? I'm more of a two feet on the ground kind of guy. Oh, no, 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 no. Hurt tomorrow. If she can stem, so can you. Find out more at She Can Stem. UCF leading Kent State 28 to 3 at the half. UCF, UCF celebrating their first game as a Big 12 member. Touchdown tail end of the second quarter. Alex Holler. Holla. Third quarter in a moment. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. H DNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Tow hitches of the world, prepare for glory. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not like like the good, good old, old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. So far, so good for the Knights. UCF leading Kent State 28-3. We've played 30 minutes of football. We've got 30 minutes remaining. Big day in Orlando with my partner, Devin Gardner. I am Eric Collins. UCF playing as a Big 12 member for the first time in program history. And Devin, I'm going to give you a chance to critique their first half of play. It's been good, but it could be better. They had some turnovers, but the, for the most part, they dominated the game. But that's not saying that Kent State has not come to play. Kent State has played a really good game as well, but the score doesn't suggest that they have some things that they need to do, but it's been a lot. A lot of Plumlee and those wide receivers and running backs. Yeah, four touchdowns, six times they touched the football for UCF. Uh, a lot of different weapons they're going to be yeah. have available this year down in Orlando. Absolutely. It's an embarrassment of riches, if you will. It's a smorgasbord of opportunity for Plumlee, and he's doing a very good job distributing the ball tonight. All right, in case you missed anything, folks, here are your first half highlights. And it starts with Plumlee getting the ball to the talented Xavier Townsend, and he makes a play, breaks the tackle, and gets in the end zone. And then Plumlee says, I'll do it myself and gets the edge, takes in the end zone and says, come on, bring it some more. Welcome to the Big 12, but then you get a made field goal by Kent State to try to keep the game close, but 
in those later stages of that second half, they bring in the big fella, Jordan McDonald, in the Wildcat situation to take some of those hits off their quarterback. He takes it in the end zone and does a little dance. And then just before the end of the half, a wide open Alec Holler in the end zone. It's been all UCF to this point in the game, but Kent State has an opportunity coming out to make sure that they continue to fight in this game and keep it close. Let's take a look at our team comparison sponsored by Credible, the MVP of loan shopping. Check rates on Credible.com today. Man, those stats are very lopsided. Uh, and, and, and the stats are more lopsided, I think, than the score is. The score, uh, I think it's, it's a lot closer than what it seems, 28-3. to 3. But these stats tell a totally different story. 205 rushing for the UF, UCF Knights. I mean, this is this is a uphill battle for Kent State here in the second half. But I think with Alimo and the way he's been able to navigate the offense, he has the one interception where it was an amazing play by the Kent State defense defense to Jordan Mask. I mean, not the Kent State defense, but the UCF defense to Jordan Mask. I think that he's played a really clean game. If he can continue to play the way that he was, the way that he was, I think they can have some success here in the second half. That Kent State's going to start with the football. Krishan McCray back deep, won't have an opportunity. Boomed out of the back of the end zone. Ball to be spotted at the 25-yard line. Well, just to get you up to speed, Kent State with a brand new quarterback, really a brand new everything. 11 new starters on offense. Every single returning starter for starter from last year did not return. Yeah, and not only that, Eric, only three touchdowns returned, right? So, so even if you don't have the starters, you would think you have some guys that contributed and got some touchdowns on the board. Only three touchdowns on the entire team returned. So I think that they are fighting an uphill battle before this game even started, but they have an even higher battle to fight. But I think Alimo can come out and they found something in that first half or especially later in this first quarter the RPO was something that really worked for him and see if they can get back to it first man through the line Gavin Garcia pushes the line forward three yards Garcia in the first half seven carries 15 yards that was actually the leading rusher in the first half for Kent State he had 15 Alimo at nine and Xavier Williams ran for nine yards that was it in terms of ground game Second down at seven. Quick pass. It's complete. That's the tight end, Justin Holmes. First time we've called his name. Sophomore tight end. It's a nice job because in the drop back pass game, you will struggle just because those big guys up front. Lee Hunter, Ricky Barber, Selascar, they've done a very good job of getting to the quarterback. So you get the ball out quickly, you set up a third and short. No one jumps. Alima looks to the sideline. Garcia pushes the pile forward. Garcia's listed at 5'8", 187, but he runs with some intent. Gain of five. It's a very nice job up front by deuce blocking those offensive, defensive linemen and getting to the linebacker depth so that Garcia can turn his legs and push through. And when I say deuce block, I mean two offensive linemen doubling a defensive lineman up to a linebacker. Deuce block. Freshman center, Andrew Page. Starting the first game he's ever played in as a college player at center, which takes a whole bunch of mental capacity. Out of bounds, looking for Jameel Gardner. Second down at 10. That was one of those times where Alimo Al just picked the wrong side, right? He had Jamil Gardner early, but he started to move and create, and by that time, Jamil Gardner was already covered and out of bounds. Alimo's a redshirt junior, but didn't play much at all at Purdue. Just three games. Garcia, hold never developed. It's going to bring up third down. Last year, Kent State five and seven, four and four in the MAC. Their head coach, Sean Lewis, left to go to Boulder and be the offensive coordinator for Deion Sanders. What we've seen from UCF in, on third down is man-to-man -man defense. They haven't really brought a lot of pressure from the linebackers. They just played man-to-man -man defense with guys underneath. We call them the rats, trying to rob underneath routes. Third and nine, Alimo. Too much. Every time he's thrown a pass in the direction of Luke Floria, it's been incomplete. That's now the fourth target for Floria. Yeah, there it is again. That man-to-man -man defense, a very nice job by the Jordan
Mask, who had the amazing pick earlier in the game. He does a very good job because Florida does a nice job of getting on his toes and trying to stick him, but he closes the distance, looks back to find the ball once he's in phase with the wide receiver, and just uses the sideline as his friend and continues to ride him out of bounds, creating the fourth down. The Aussie, Josh Smith, that's his best punt of the day. Turns it over, fair catch called and made at the 21. Townsend, punt to 40 yards, no return. UCF back on offense when we return. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. Oh, they did it! Peak fall achieved! DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. 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 Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly! You're not the boss of us! Power to the people! Ah, oh, well, individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Tens of thousands of customers wrote about Carvana being smooth in their five-star reviews, including Terry. To be honest, I thought it was almost too smooth, but Carvana was super transparent from beginning to end. Car details, financing, every step, and there were no surprises. Well, my monthly payment did come out lower than expected. Then I got to pick up my Mustang at the vending machine, and it was so fun and exciting, I did a little dance. <laughs> Trust me, financing my car with Carvana was super smooth. Finance your next car with Carvana today. UCF's going to be an offense for the first time here in our second half. Darren Hinshaw, former UCF quarterback, has come back home to be the offensive coordinator. This is his first game calling the shots. When you're working with Gus Malzahn and he allows you to call the shots, this is pressure, Devin. Gus Malzahn likes to run that football. You can see the old quarterback, 28 rush calls and only 18 pass calls, but the balance is there. You, you know a Gus Malzahn team wants to win the line of scrimmage, and that's what they're doing tonight. This is Richardson with the carry. Tries to bounce it to the outside. Not much. Leading rusher for UCF. This could be a problem. Is their quarterback, John Rice Plumley? He's got 88 yards on eight carries. Richardson second with 51 yards. Make it 55 now after that carry. And then you got uh, Harvey next up the list with 28. A quick pitch and catch. Out across the first down marker. That is Javon Baker. Let's see if UCF goes back to that super fast, up tempo style of play that we saw early in the first quarter. Substitution, so they have to wait and allow Kent State to substitute. That's a backward pass. pass. Oh my goodness. Look at Harvey. That was doomed for failure, but somehow he got out of it and made a positive out of a negative. How, how about R.J. Harvey, right? He, he, he has an opportunity to throw the ball downfield. It's not there, right? And you can see it right away. When the quarterback steps forward and throws it backwards, you know that they're trying to get the former quarterback, R.J. Harvey. Quarterback in high school, he's 21-5 and five as a starting quarterback in high school, Eric. So great decision by him, and that's how he went 21-5, and five, not turning the ball over with an opportunity. Gain of eight, and they get the first down because of the hands of Baker. Just stuck out that left paw, and the ball stuck to it. Second catch of the drive for Baker. Pickup of nine. It looked like Baker might have been a little short. Just a miscommunication by John Rice Plumley, and he he might have been short on his route, or Plumley might have thought he was just going to go a little deeper. But luckily, they didn't have to suffer for it. Nice catch. Four minutes into our second half. Javon Baker is a, a name we just haven't called much tonight. He's one of their big play receivers, and, and they called him a complete receiver. Plumley caught Harvey out of the backfield. Does he have enough speed? He does. Touchdown, R.J. Harvey. Jet 
sweep coming across for Harvey. They're going to have him look like he's going to block, but uh, he's not blocking. He's getting up the seam. Very nice design on that play, and he just gets lost in the shuffle, and then the rest is all him. He breaks the tackle, and then it's speed to the end zone. Seven possessions for UCF, five touchdowns. They only need five plays to go 78 yards for the TD. Things are looking really good right now for UCF. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu, snickerdoodle cookie dough, pumpkin pie, they're back. Cloud, cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Oh, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. We had to take out our old gas heating and radiant heat. That was a really, really huge project. Who has the time? As a toddler mom, I do not. I was so overwhelmed, so I started contacting people off of Angie. To be able to see contractors that are licensed and real people reviews, to work with people that obviously knew what they were doing, it was a game changer. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Get started today at Angie.com. UCF, their largest lead of the ball game. They lead 35 to 3. They have now put five touchdowns on the board. Their quarterback, Plumley, has accounted for four of them three passing and one running. And this one's a real quickie five plays, 78 yards in less than two minutes. Dev, that must be pretty cool. Quarterback, wide receiver getting together. Quarterback, running back getting together. Just celebrating a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, I mean, R.J. Harvey, he can be confused as a wide receiver. He's got good pass catching ability out of the backfield. And that's kind of what makes him so dangerous. His, his ability to run, obviously, as a blocker as well. And then the pass catching ability. This is McCray. Krishan McCray. A lot of wiggle with this kid. All right, let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Devin, what do you have? Yeah, what, what UCF is trying to do is trying to overflow the one side of the field, kind of flood the field, but Kent State does a very one, good two, job. You three. got one, two, three there for UCF, where you have three to match. And then the fourth guys are the safety and R.J. Harvey. Now he's just not in position to make the play, so now you can get him to him quick, and now he just becomes that great running back that he's been all night, all the way to the end zone. Well designed. I like it. Most yards per touch. Mr. Harvey, 7.2 last year. Oh, my goodness. That should have been an interception heading the other way. Yep. Walter Yates had his mitts on. It came right to his midsection. I'm sorry, that's uh, Nakai Martinez. Martinez. Yeah, he, he is not going to let that down in film. They're going to be watching that. He's got brick for, bricks for hand. It hits him right in the belly, and he can't make the play there. You see him grab his face right after. Second, third quarter possession for Mike Alimo and Kent State. Another deep shot. And incomplete again. The deep shot has not been friendly to Kent State. Trell Harris had a step look like, but the pass wasn't able to be secured. Yeah, uh, on that play, he, he doesn't leave space on the sideline, but he beats the defender. Defender looks back before he's in phase, and he's able to run past. He just hasn't been open on these deep shots, and he doesn't know what to do with his hands. He doesn't make the play. Eight deep shots, six incompletions, an interception, and a pass interference. That's something I think that when they go back and look at film, they're going to have to address, because if you're not going to just run past guys, you cannot leave zero space for the quarterback to navigate the throws. First down, good desire there. Hayden Junker, senior from Maslin, Ohio. 
Gain of 10. Chains will move. Kent State averaging three yards per play. UCF averaging eight and a half. It's a big difference. Lee Hunter makes the tackle. Gain of just one. First game, Kenny Burns. It's Kenny with an I. K-E-N-N-I. Asked him about it. Said, that's why my mom wanted it. Man, my mom. Yeah. Mama named Kenny with an I. I'm calling Kenny with an I. From Springfield, Illinois. Spent the last handful of years in the Big Ten. Associate head coach under P.J. Fleck at Minnesota. McCray. It's going to bring up third down. But I think I can speak for you, Devin. We both were impressed when we had a chance to talk to Kenny Burns a couple of days ago on the telephone. Mm -hmm. he, was, uh, he was super impressive, especially for a guy like, like we talked about. He, he's never been a coordinator. Uh, he's a former running back. You don't see those opportunities come so often where they get the chance to be a head coach. And, and his team has not backed down tonight. The score is lopsided. The stats are lopsided. But I think they have some there in the Mid-American Conference. Third and five, slant incomplete. That was Gardner, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down at five. Another one of those long arm cornerbacks, Corey Thornton, 6'1", 190, out of Miami, Florida, does a very good job of getting his hands in there. He goes to a famous school, Booker T. Washington. Oh, goodness, yes. Goes to a famous school, yeah. Yeah, a lot of athletes have come out of there. Absolutely. He does a very good job of being on the receiver's back, not coming too early, reaching that arm around, and that's what you can do when you have great length. When you have long arms, you don't have to make contact prematurely. He does a very good job there and forces another punch for Smith. Fair catch called for and made at the 10-yard line by Townsend. Punt to 40 yards, no return. UCF, what do they have? They got the ball when we come back. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the force of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Take on the day. With Taltz, up to 90% of patients saw a significant improvement of their psoriasis plaques. Some even saw 100% clear skin. And for those with psoriatic arthritis, Taltz reduces joint pain and stiffness. Don't use if you are allergic to Taltz. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. Increased risk of infections and lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about infection, symptoms, or if inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop worsen or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Ask your doctor about Taltz. Welcome back, everyone. UCF, the Knights, they've got the football. So far, so good. They have five touchdowns, seven times they've had the football. Already with 436 yards. They've been effective on third down. And they've got a keeper in their quarterback, John Rice Plumley. Knew he was a great athlete, but he seems to be thriving right now in this offense. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been very impressed with what he's been able to do in the running pass game. Especially the fundamentals. Randy Pittman. Oh my goodness. He's a true freshman and trying to get Pittman the ball. Very high they are on Pittman. He was a big time get as a recruit. Uh, on the offensive side, Pittman was a big deal. On the defensive side, John Walker, defensive lineman, was a big get this year. They said Randy Pittman is special. That's the word they used when they wanted to describe him. Plumley Caught. This is Baker again. He's got the first down and then some to the 33. Big third quarter for Javon Baker. 
you know, sometimes announcers forget to mention all the time that was had. It's a special play by Plumlee and a nice job by Baker, but how about the time for Plumlee to sit in the pocket and survey and survey and survey. Nice coverage in the back end by Kent State, but a nice job of Plumlee using the pocket, using the pocket, and then find a way to get the ball out. Quick pitch and catch. This time it's Kobe Hudson to the 40. This offensive line is gelled very, very well. Grable, Schmidt, Metcalf, Paul Ole, Marshall. Those are all guys that didn't work together a year ago. You got three guys that come to the team this year, and they've gelled really well and worked together. Incomplete. Baker had it, then dropped it. Yeah, the transfer portal just changes everything. You can go out and say, you know what, we got a couple holes on the offensive line. That's what UCF said. And they bring in Bula Schmidt from Fresno State, Drake Metcalf, their center from Stanford, and then their right tackle, Marcellus Marshall, actually comes over from Kent State. It was all Mac yeah. as a tackle last year. Leaves the Mac to go and play the Big 12 at UCF. Playing against some of his friends, and, and you spoke him up because he gets a false start. Star start your number on 72 cue. offense. Five yard penalty, third down. On cue, the, the what are all the Mac performer from a year ago. You hype him up on how he's going against his buddies, and then he gets a false start. He's been very, fairly quiet. He had a holding penalty earlier. But uh, he's a really good player, and that's a guy they said they seeked out. They tried to find him, and they, they said they're really happy with what they got in Marcellus Marshall. So it's third down and eight. Tons of time for Plumley. Incomplete. Good job by Kent State. They're going to force the punt team to come on. It's one of those times where you pick the wrong side. He's got wide open guys to the other side of the field. But a lot of the UCF offense is going to be pick a side. And you can see the coach right now is telling them, we got this side based off the rotation that he saw in the back end. He picked the wrong side and, and it was covered. But the other side had open guys. And those are things that Plum is going to continue to work through. He worked really hard this offseason in the spring and the summer with his fundamentals and reading coverage and understanding what they want from him while also playing baseball. Mitch McCarthy, that's the first punt of the day by UCF. First punt. Well, the most anticipated reunion of the summer is here as John Cena comes home to SmackDown. The man, the myth, the legend at SmackDown's biggest event of the summer. Friday night, SmackDown, 8 Eastern on Fox. Big wrestling guy? Big wrestling guy? Uh, did I think about it? I went to SummerSlam, so I just want to let you know. Okay. I don't know if you're a big wrestling guy or not. I went to SummerSlam. They let me keep my chair. It was amazing. Oh, keep so your much chair? Fun. What do you mean? Yeah, they give you like a really nice chair, and if you sit close, you get, you get to keep it. I get that. It's crazy to me. You keep your chair. You go keep to an arena. Go with this chair. They say, you take it home with you. It's an outstanding chair. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I will be a wrestling fan if I get the furniture out of the deal. <laughs> All right, so Kent State, they've got the football. What's the thought process now with Kent State? Uh, obviously, a MAC team against a Big 12 team, big-time deficit. What are you trying to prove to yourself, prove to the coaching staff? What are you trying to put on tape right now? Well, you got to know, they know nothing about this team coming into this game. You, you get a chance to play yourselves all the time, but they need to see fight. They need to see guys continue to work on the fundamentals, continue to play football. This is a game, an opportunity playing against a Big 12 team that probably had you outmatched from the start. It gives you an opportunity to work toward what you really want to do in the season, which their goals are still intact. Win the MAC conference. That's what they want to do. They want to compete in the MAC. And I think if they continue to work on some of the kinks through in the rest of this game, they can move into their season hitting the ground one. First catch by Floria. Had been targeted four times and not able to haul in any of the passes. He's now got one catch for five yards. It's third down at three. One thing I think they can be comfortable with, they have a quarterback in this young guy. He's not that young, but he hasn't had a bunch of reps. Alimo. Bounces out of the pocket. He's got the first down. And Alimo all the way down that left sideline. Could have easily went out of bounds and said, you know what? I'll take the extra 20. And that's a little bit of the fight that I was just talking about. I want to see these guys continue to play. This game obviously seems to be out of reach just the way that, that, that it's going. But I want to see Alimo work on all the things. He needs the reps. Drop that climb, climb, climb. Protect the ball. I've got an avenue. Get outside. Don't go out of bounds. Go and get a little more. Hop out of bounds. Don't take a hard hit. 25 yards for Alimo. Garcia, the Malachi Crunch. 
Walter Yates, the first to wrap him up. Also in the mix, John Walker, number 55. John Walker getting some run. Walker, a freshman who is already 300 pounds, 6'4", 300. He's a big boy. He's number 55. There he is. Can't see his number very well because of kind of the goofy padding. Deion Sanders hates when defenders wear back plates. Wait, why do you have a back plate on? Why are you protecting your back? <laughs> Especially a defense blind. It's always been weird. I remember Deion Sanders as Smoke a player. Swag. He had every single bit of gear on you could possibly have. <laughs> I don't think he should be talking. <laughs> He had hand pads on, wrist pads, everything. Hey man, when you been, and if there's a tackle to be made, he was 10 yards away. Oh, I'm just saying. Oh, 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 Great player. I don't know about that. Great I've seen player. him make tackles, right? I've seen him make some tackles. But they didn't pay him that money to tackle. Correct. They paid him to make sure other guys don't catch the ball. Correct. Ball. And return punt. Now he's getting paid to win games in Colorado. It's going to be interesting it on is. Saturday. It is. Big game. Third down and nine. Alimo just throws it away. That's a part of it, right? That's a part of developing because he doesn't have a bunch of reps. You get the pressure, right? You try to escape. They have you kind of cornered. You get outside the pocket and you throw the ball away, right? Allow yourself to keep the field position that you've maintained, kick the ball away, or if you want to go for it, whatever the case may be. But that's a good football play for Alimo. So it's fourth down and nine. There is a man down. That's the right guard, Nolan Rumler. Rumler coming back home. He is a Kent, Ohio native. Began his college experience in Ann Arbor playing for the Maize and Blue. He kept the colors. Yeah, he did. A little different, but. <laughs> All right, so it's fourth down and nine. What is Kenny Burns going to do? He's going to go for it. All right. 438 remaining third quarter. Incomplete. It's tough. That's a tough throw from the left hash trying to drive that ball all the way outside to a comeback route or a drop out right. It's tough. You see us have the ball when we're back. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. A senior mayor. With this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you. Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfetto. Red Bull gives you wings. With Armorall stain repelling technology, it's easy to everyday proof your car. Thank you so much. No matter how tough the job is, Armorall technology. Less work, more clean. Oh, no. <laughs> Tip of the cap to Tom Petty. Games are not too far away. Little full moon fever. Little full moon fever, a blue moon. Second full moon of the month. Not bad. Time for tonight's good moon. Good hands, playmaker sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands. Yeah, it's R.J. Harvey. You saw there the former high school quarterback got an opportunity to throw a ball, but he did not make a bad play worse. And then it led to this opportunity to catch the ball, and he's going the 5, the 10, the 10, the 5, the touchdown! R.J. Harvey. Good hands. There's some good hands there. UCF's got the football back. First down and 10. Catch is made by Jalen Griffin. Griffin four catches last year. This is his first catch, 2023. It's a gain of four. R.J. Harvey still in the game, and he's got the ball. To the left side, Harvey. He's got a crease. He got Harvey, it. touchdown, UCF. This kick can play. He's had a wonderful second half. 52 big ones for R.J. Harvey. 
I mean, he gets the ball here. It's nothing super special up front. He just gets on that 200-meter dash, takes it, bounces outside. He's got blockers up front. That ball is supposed to go inside, but because of his talent, he takes it outside. And how about the blocking by the wide receivers down the field that helps him get in the end zone? Uh, I don't know. That might be a curtain call. That hug from that coach looks like, a, hey, that's the end. That's, that's your day. Six touchdowns, six extra points for the UCF Knights. Playing in their first game as a member of the Big 12. They lead 42 to three. UCF really hadn't had to settle. They've got those six touchdowns in eight possessions of the football. The only thing that ever stopped them was an interception by their quarterback Plumley and a fumble by their quarterback Plumley. Yep. <laughs> and Plumlee's played a really solid game, right? And if, like you said, if you take those two turns away, this could, this could be even worse. Look at that smile. Yeah, it sounds like that looks like a guy who just got the good hands award <laughs> and just scored a touchdown. You know, just reading up and looking at uh, Plumlee and looking at his interviews and different things like that leading up to this game, I I've been very impressed with, you know, obviously he's talented. He can run, he can throw, he plays baseball, he does all these different things. But, like, the command he kind of has at the podium as a leader of a team, a guy that, you know, last year was in limbo. Is he going to be the starter? Is he not? He started some games, didn't start others. Uh, and he just has such a command. He's, he seems like a very self-aware kid. Uh, I think his future is very bright here. And this UCF team, you know, they picked him to finish eight in the in the Big 12. I think that if he continues to play the way he's playing, obviously with his weapons like RG, RJ Harvey, I think that they can move up those ranks fairly quickly. Now well, they can be tested next week. They've got a game uh, out west. They're going to take on Boise State. And that's going to be an interesting test to get on the road and go a couple time zones away and take on a Broncos team that it's always hard to beat on their blue turf. You're going to watch that game? I'm going to watch that game intently, yes. How, how closely are you going to watch that game, Eric? be preparing to watch that game the entire week. I'm so excited about watching that game. Well, why are you going to be doing that, <laughs> If UCF fans are not thrilled with this, I don't want to tell them we're doing the game next week, too. Looking for Justin Holmes. Incomplete. All right, what would be progress right now for Kent State, yeah, Devin? Well, you just want to continue to move the ball, right? Create explosive plays, throw underneath, play on time, stay on schedule. That's something that you saw a little bit of in the first half that Alimo and this offense was able to do, but then they kind of got away from it and got behind the change, and that's just not something this offense is prepared to do at these early stages of the season. We've gone under the four-minute mark of our third quarter. And look at uh, McCray. Krishan McCray has been a big play waiting to happen. He had what would have been a 74-yard catch in the first quarter, nullified because of a penalty. Uh, this is a big-time play that goes across the 50-yard line. Yeah, it does a very good job. The safety gets caught with his eyes inside. You, you know, remember I talked about it early in the game. Kent State did a very good job of play action and RPO, and it made those safeties come down, come down, and they were able to hit him behind with some nice plays. Garcia busts through the line. Down to the 34-yard line. See the big fellow Lee Hunter at the end jump and bear hug the entire pile. Well, it was 80 degrees when we began our game. Muggy day, of course, obviously, uh, the aftermath of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. A lot of rain throughout the course of the day in Orlando. Muggy, humid. Wonder how much longer the guys on UCF are going to be on the field. Garcia, best run of the day. Gavin Garcia. Finally smacked down to the ground. William Wells on the tackle, but 13 yards for the sophomore. William Wells held him up, and then Walter Yates the third comes and just smacks him. It was a nice game. Up tempo. Garcia to the 19. Kent State last year, 5-7, and 4-4, four and four, mid american Conference play. But they lost their head coach, Sean Lewis, leaving to go to Colorado and be the offensive coordinator for Deion Sanders. As well as their quarterback, went out to UCLA to compete with the freshman phenom, Dante Moore, for that quarterback position. First time that Kent State has been in the red zone, and they are just barely. They're at the 19. William. 
Williams gets back to the line of scrimmage. All right, early in the year, we we're talking over terminology just outside the 20 yard line. You call it what, Devin? Or the high red or the fringe red? High red. That's 21 to 25? 21 and up. Okay. For me, you know, I'm, I'm offensive guy. I say it's to the 50. We're in that red, baby. High red, of course. But yeah, 20 to the. 25-30. Maybe, you know, some teams say, hey, the 30, like a Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs probably call the 30 the high rate. Minute 30 remaining, third quarter. And dumped down behind the line of scrimmage is Alimo. Malachi Lawrence, redshirt freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, makes the play. And on fourth down, I think they're going to try and kick a field goal. How about this motor by Malachi Lawrence? There he is in the middle of the offensive line. He gets cut down and then he continues to motor through and, and make the play on the quarterback very nice job the big fella getting the opportunity up big he comes in and this is how you earn reps during the season and, and he does a good job of trying to earn something there Andrew Glass made one missed one in the first half and this one no doubt about it so Glass makes it a 42 to 6 game with 40 Five seconds remaining, make it 49 seconds remaining in our third quarter. It's a lot of game to play and a lot of opportunity on both sides. Kent State has a lot of young guys, a lot of guys that haven't played like we've already talked about. Zero returning starters on offense, only three touchdowns returning. Uh, and, and on the UCF side, they're going to get some of their young guys in there. We just saw uh, number 51, Malachi Lawrence, get a chance, a redshirt sophomore, to make a play on defense that we hadn't seen all game. So these are viable, these are important reps that uh, I think that on, on both sides that Coach Malzone and, and Coach Burns really wants to see their team continue to push forward and, and learn how to play football the right way because you've been just hitting each other all, all uh, summer. you, you got to find out, can these young guys contribute in the season in special teams, offense, and Defense. Would you can expect to see a Limo remain in the game for the fourth quarter? I, I think so. We've talked about it. He, he just hasn't had a bunch of opportunity, a bunch of reps. And you cannot replace these reps against a UCF team that has some very talented players. It's a power five opportunity. You have to allow him to continue to get the reps, continue to see different coverages, continue to try to make throws and get on the time, or get on good timing with his wide receivers. Touchback ball will be spotted at the 25. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is coming to the biggest season opener college football has seen in years as his Colorado Buffaloes are going to face the 17th ranked TCU Horned Frogs. Big noon Saturday on Fox starts this week. Said he's coming. Oh, look at this. Look at that comparison. The comparison between Deion Sanders and the quarterback for UCF, John Rice Plumley. That's good company, man. About the same size. The, the 40's a little different. Now remember, Plumley, that's his high school 40, so if he's he might be a little faster. You know, he looks look fast today. But he, that's high in high school. He's clocked at 442. It's pretty fast for a quarterback, though. And on the bottom of the screen, it said they both played college baseball. Yeah. Deion at uh, Florida State. And Plumley actually two schools, both at Ole Miss and this past spring at UCF. And yeah, UCF fans are, uh, I think it's well documented, UCF's uh, film department and, and media team did a very nice job of documenting during the spring where Plumley he's playing baseball, he's you know, still in bases, he's doing his deal, then he jogs into the locker room, takes his stuff off, changes it to his football uniform, and ends up throwing two touchdowns in the spring game. I mean, pretty cool. Not quite Dion playing in the, you know, World Series and all that, but it's a pretty cool thing as number Johnny zero. Richardson. Flags flying, and no one's going to catch Richardson. Richardson houses it, but will it hold up? Deep into his run, I saw a flag come in. If it stands, it's a 70-yard touchdown, but I got a bad feeling. Uh, that Johnny Richardson's going to be disappointed. It's probably coming back, but I mean, what a nice play. Number 19, offense. It's 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still results in a first down. They call that on the wide receiver, Jared Baker. You always want your receivers to block. Rarely are they called for a hold. But that's what one looks like. Yep, he wrapped his arm and covered his nine. You didn't even know that was a 29 jersey. He, he held him so bad. But I don't think he needed to, honestly. And, and remember the quote I told you from John Rice Pumley. Did you get your 
did you press record? Because when Johnny gets the ball, obviously something special can happen. That's a nice play by an explosive player. He's not the biggest guy in the world, five foot seven, 170 pounds, but he's clearly very explosive. Final ticks of our third quarter. UCF flying the ointment. They've committed seven penalties. That's cost them 70 yards. Set up the screen. It's caught. This is Hudson. Kobe Hudson to the 36 yard line. UCF getting yardage in big chunks right now. They may be taking advantage of a gassed Kent State team. So, four fingers in the air. We've made it to our final quarter. It has been all UCF. Happy to be joined in the Big 12. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Uh, Senor Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you! Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfetto! Red Bull gives you wings. Fly to Paris, see the tower, smaller than you expected. Wait in line, see the Mona Lisa, smaller than you expected. Check in, see your room, bigger than you expected. Join one key where gold and platinum members get travel perks like room upgrades. UCF has been as consistent as a metronome. 14 points in the first quarter, 14 in the second, 14 in the third. Uh, we begin our fourth quarter with UCF on offense. They lead 42 to 6 on Kent State, a team they haven't played since way back in 2004. In that meeting, Kent State was victorious. Plumley still in the game, fourth quarter. Shoots it out. This is Richardson. And he's driven backwards. Devin Nicholson on the tackle. I haven't called his name a, a whole bunch. Uh, in the beginning of the game, we called it almost seemed like every play. This is the first time in, in a little while. You can see he's got that hand wrapped. Looks like a new thing that he, he's kind of trying to protect there. He's got that right arm hanging a little bit. Sixty-first play of the ball game for UCF. It's a dart. It's caught. This is Hudson. Hudson down to the 13-yard line. Capone Blue jumped on his back. UCF is now averaging over nine yards per play. 23 yards on that game. Love John Rice Plumley's comfortability in the pocket. You know, there are guys all around. You got guys wrong arming guys and falling down at his feet, but there's no true imminent danger. He stands in there and throws a strike and allows us a receiver to catch and run. That's something that he also worked on this summer and this spring is okay, you throw a good pass, but make that pass so that the receiver can catch it and continue and not break stride and run. He does a good job of giving, giving it to Kobe Hudson there. And a whistle and a timeout. Timeout, UCF. Their first of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. Well, Gus Malzahn is not calling the plays, but he is calling the timeouts. Knew that the play clock was winding down and had to call the timeout. So, Gus Malzahn, of course, he uh, kind of burst onto the scene, worked with Gene Chizik, calling the plays during that 2010 title run at Auburn. Had a chance to be uh, a college head coach for the first time at Arkansas State. Then went back to Auburn as the head decision maker. 68 wins during his time there. And now three years in Orlando guiding UCF from the uh, American Athletic Conference now into the Big 12. I mean, I'm excited for him. And, and like we've talked about and we talked about early in the game, for the first time, he's not calling plays, right? And it's like everybody comes to the show to see Gus Malzahn call plays. But with... Darren Henshaw, the new offensive coordinator, has done it. He's done a very good job. And when we talked to him about 
why was Henshaw the right guy for the job? He said he's got a lot of the same philosophy that I have. He he understands how I think, and, and he trusts him with that ability to call the plays, and, and he's done a very good job here tonight. Something in his teeth there. <laughs> you gotta get coach some uh, some floss sticks, you know. Maybe get a little sponsorship for him. <laughs> Second down to ten. Plumley to the end zone. Intercepted. Nick Giacolone. That's the second interception for Kent State, and they keep UCF out of the end zone. Yeah, that's a that's a forced throw. He tries to force it in there on the line. You got to give some touch. Got to loft that ball over and let the big fella make a play. Another turnover. Kent State will have the ball, and we're back. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Oh, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. There's only two chairs left. You better hurry. Go, 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 go. You got this. Mom? This news you lose. The BMW Electric Summer On Sales Event. Lease a BMW iX for $7.99 per month. Welcome back, everyone. A rare mistake in tonight's game for John Rice Plumley. Through interception in the red zone last year, FBS ranks uh, red zone. They weren't bad. 13 went well, a lot of drives, but the actual scoring percentage was bad. Yeah. They got there a lot, but they just didn't do what they needed to do, and obviously that's uh, something that's been worked on over the last couple of months. Yeah, and when you have a game like this where you're pretty dominant, it's good to have something to look back on and say, hey, we still need to clean that up, and that's something they're going to have to clean up. The turnovers uh, in the red zone, you don't want to go back to having those six. You're getting down there. Now you want to start punching it in or, or at least walking away with a kick. So Kent State, their only scores, a couple of field goals. They've had three real scoring opportunities, and they've all been field goal attempts. They made two and missed one. Golden Flash just haven't substituted out very much. We still have their starting quarterback, Lionel, in the game. Starting tailback, Gavin Garcia, in the game. Kent State's going to play next week in Fayetteville, Arkansas, against the Razorbacks. It's not getting any easier for this Kent State uh, offense, is it? Now, the first home game is going to be September 16th against Central Connecticut State. So you have road games against a Big 12 team and an SEC team. Third and seven. First down. Smart play by Alimo, which gets to the tight end, Justin Holmes. Alimo, first start as a college player. 11 for 29. It's not a percentage that he's going to be too happy with. 125 yards and an interception. Garcia. One thing that really jumps out 
for this UCF defense. And, and obviously, these are some of the backups right now in the game. But they've got good flow, good speed, good team speed on defense, right, where they're able to fly to the ball from sideline to sideline and make plays. And number 50 there, middle of your screen, 55. That's John Walker, true freshman, playing in his first college game from Kissimmee, Florida. Tremont Morris Brash makes that open field tackle. But yeah, the coaching staff couldn't stop talking about John Walker. He looks like uh, an upperclassman right now as a true freshman. Yeah. And they got him away from a lot of other big time programs that were nipping at his heels. Imagine when he gets a, a full year in the weight room, right? And tighten up some of that baby fat you still got from high school. I mean, he could be a really, really good player. Third down at 12. Line to gain is the 47. Alimo. Again, anything beyond about 10 yards has not been good for Kent State. Every single deep shot has resulted in either an incompletion or an interception, with the one exception, a pass interference call. Eric. Nine deep shots, and the best thing that's ever happened is one pass interference on the defense. Eric, I'm just telling you, they're going to revisit the alignment of the receivers, right? Maybe lining up a little bit tighter, closer to the numbers, so that they can have that space on the outside, because I, I just don't think that these are bad throws. I just think there's no space to put the ball with the receiver running up the edge of the sideline. Ball goes out of bounds. We're going to get a chance to see UCF on offense one more time. Will John Rice Plumley still be under center? No one can take better care of your child than you can. But when they start getting into everything, you may need a little help. So Duracell created the only lithium coin batteries with a non-toxic bitter coating to help discourage swallowing. Making safety simple and giving you more peace of mind. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back! Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not like like the good, good old, old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the force of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back, everyone. This was the April 14th for John Rice Plumley. He was playing baseball for the UCF Knights. Hits himself a triple. Says, you know what? Okay, I'm going to go see what football's like. He quickly gets over to the football stadium. He has to change. He's got someone there to help him. And then he's out in the field. I was excited. What can you possibly do after thinking baseball the entire day? He said, well, how about I throw a touchdown pass? Now, the triple that he hit was at 6.15 in the evening. That touchdown pass was at 8.38. So talk about two hours of ecstasy playing two different sports in front of adoring fans. Really cool stuff. Yeah, it's, it was awesome. Awesome to see. When I remember when I saw it, it, it was all over the Internet. It kind of blew up there. I mean, you know, you get guys that do both, but to be able to do that, because he had a lot to work on, right? When when Darren Henshaw comes in, he's got a lot of stuff to work on, and so he had to do double duty as we got the big fella rumbling down the field. Jordan McDonald on a big gain off the swing pass from Timmy McClain, the new quarterback in. But uh, he had a lot of stuff to work on as far as footwork and different things like that. And for him to be able to pull double duty like that, it was super impressive. And when I asked Coach Henshaw, he's like, Is that, was that hard? He's like, yeah, it's hard for him. But he, he committed to football and making sure that he did all the things necessary to come into this season ready to play uh, and, and so he can hit the ground running similar to the way he's done today. Yeah, Plumlee's actually a prospect. If he wanted to play baseball, that probably would be an option. Mm -hmm. At 286, 10 homers, 32 runs batted in, 18 stolen bases. It'd be 4 4, four two, I mean, yeah. right? And they also say he's supposed to be a great piano player. Wow. Like, off the charts. He's got an ear. He can hear anything and immediately play it. Renaissance, man. 
But does he know middle evil poetry? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Here's McLean. Trent Whittemore, junior transfer from Florida, looked down at his toes instead of looking the ball in. Trent Whittemore is an athlete. His whole family is athletes. His mother was an all-SEC volleyball player. She's not going to be happy, Mr. Whittemore. Got to make that play. It's a nice job uh, of McLean, who's fresh off the sideline. A nice back shoulder. The defender is on top. Back shoulder, but you see his eyes leave the ball to look down. You have to keep your eyes focused on that ball to make that catch. McLean's pass is caught. That'll be a first down inside the 10, down to the 6. Randy Pittman, true freshman tight end. Lynn Haven, Florida, 6'2", 225. So first down and goal already. Six touchdowns for UCF. The only thing that's ever stopped them, they've had one punt, is the two interceptions and the fumble that was lost. Keeper, McLean. McLean's got experience. Started at USF, but just decided UCF was a better fit for him. Is it difficult for a team to have one quarterback who's a right-handed thrower and a backup who's a left-handed thrower? I think it, it not necessarily difficult. It's just different. You know, you got to protect the, the protections are going to be just a little bit different. You got to make sure. But the way they play offense, they're not just a true drop back offense, right? So it's a lot of RPO, a lot of play action, different things like that. So it's not a, as big a deal as it would be in a, in a more pro style type of offense. But what a luxury to have such a, a, a viable backup. Touchdown, Mark Anthony Richards. Seventh touchdown of the game for UCF. Eleven possessions, seven touchdowns. On the exchange, it was just a little bit of a bobble, but Mark Anthony Richards was able to handle it, and it doesn't go untouched, but pretty, not a whole bunch of resistance getting into the end zone there for the seventh touchdown of the day for UCF. Everybody's getting a piece. Halfway through our fourth quarter, and it is now a 41-point lead. My math is terrible. 43-point lead. <laughs> <laughs> I wish everybody could have saw my face and said, wait, 41. <laughs> At Chipotle, real food always starts with real ingredients in real kitchens. When you order Chipotle, real food starts with you. Whether it's in restaurant, pickup, or delivery. However, you Chipotle is the easiest way to Chipotle. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like, like the good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. UCF's offense has been on point all evening long. They don't have the three turnovers, but besides that, super effective. John Rice Blumley, 276 yards, three touchdowns throwing. Uh, also had a touchdown on the ground. R.J. Harvey contributing touchdowns both on the ground and through the sky. And Xavier Townsend uh, closing in on 100 yards. Probably won't get there. I don't think he's going to be in the game much longer. Uh, but those are some big-time weapons for the new offensive coordinator. Darren Hinshaw. Yeah, I mean, they've got some weapons. And this this leaderboard doesn't include Javon Baker, who they think is a very complete receiver. Great size, speed, athleticism. And, and Kobe Hudson, who they said has really big play potential. Those guys didn't even get involved nearly as much as you thought they might have. So they still got a little meat on the bone when, when you talk about the weapons that the man on your screen, Darren Hinshaw, has to, I don't know, play with.
right, Kent State's going to get it one more time. 7.26 remaining. We've seen nothing except for Michael Alimo. And I don't think he's going to come out. I think it may be... Well, the backup quarterback just announced earlier this week, Tommy Ulatowski. He wears number 14, Chicago kid. Yep, this is going to be Ulatowski. Earned a scholarship this year. Chicago kid, St. Rita. It's in the Catholic League. Coaches were not bashful. When we asked about uh, what Ulatowski was all about, they said, you know what, he's got a chance. We really like the kid. Yeah, I mean, you don't give kids scholarships if you don't. And so he earned a scholarship, and he's also a kid that in high school had a bunch of Division I baseball off offers and opportunities, but his heart was in football. Now he played at St. Rita, which if you know anything about Chicago land football, it's a really good program. Usually they have a quarterback that's kind of one and done, but he was a three-year starter. Talk about Ulatowski, a baseball player, actually committed to go to Creighton originally to play baseball. So you know what? Football's probably my thing. See, unlike Plumley, you can't go to Creighton and play baseball and football. They don't have a, a football team. Mm. Baseball only. Forty-nine to six is our score. Kent State had that field goal in the first quarter and a field goal in the third quarter. Really haven't threatened the end zone at all. On third and seven, Ulatowski goes down. Pass rush, relentless. And the punt unit will have to come on. Three and out. Three sacks on the night for UCF. It's a lot of more of what we've kind of seen, especially when you get behind the chains in, in a strict, straight drop back situation. It, it's very tough for the the line of Kent State to protect and give time to survey the field and make a play downfield in the passing game. So with six minutes exactly remaining in our game, we've got a timeout here in Orlando. We'll be back with UCF on offense. Your paint is really bad. What? I said best coffee I've ever had. Should have used Bear. Sorry, side wear. No, I said should have used Bear. Today, let's paint. Right now, get America's most trusted paint brand at a new low price. Bear, only at the Home Depot. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like, like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back, everyone. UCF leads Kent State 49 to 6. Six minutes remaining in our fourth quarter. We keep talking about UCF heading to the Big 12. They are not alone in being newbies in the Big 12. You got Cincinnati, you got Houston, both coming out of the uh, American Athletic Conference, and then BYU, no longer an independent. Welcome to the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, these are all teams that have been successful, right? They've, uh, I dare I say, dominated where they where they are, and they say, hey, we'll come up and play with the big boys in the Power Five. More opportunities for them to get in those those spots in the college football playoff that everybody so desires. Big 12 now with 14 teams. <laughs> yeah, there used to be a time when you could actually tell how many teams in a couple. That's the Eric Nick. Collins man. Yeah. Oh, man. Ah, ah, yes! Yes! <laughs> Very good. 
The Big 12. Yeah, the first game for UCF as uh, in a Big 12 game is actually going to be in Manhattan, Kansas. Oh. They're going to take on Kansas State September 23rd. Do you feel like there is a style of play or anything that UCF is going to need to adapt to to go from the American to the Big 12? I think they're multiple. I think they have size. They have big guys. Obviously, Gus Malzantini, he's been in the SEC. He's not going to have small guys. He's got big guys along the offensive and defensive lines. And they can play fast. They can play with tempo. They can play slow. They can run the football. Very important. Uh, I think they're well suited in the Big 12 to, to be a, a real contender. Right, one thing that Gus Malzahn was talking about, and he's had a lot of time to think about this, when breaking down how the games are decided in the Big 12, closely matched games, a lot of those games come down to the last possession or two. So how do you close out games? How do you do the small things that's going to be needed to win conference games from here on out? So that was a big thrust of their preseason camp, is making sure that everything stretch run-wise was in order because winning close games relies on doing the small things right the entire game and particularly in the fourth quarter of course second series for timmy mcclain lefty from sanford florida transfer from usf mcclain bullet too fast right through the wickets that was the uh, first look given to tyler griffin Griffin coming into the game. Boone High School in Orlando. Clock stops, 420 remaining. Devin, you were quarterback at Michigan. Do you remember coming in late in the game, trying to get a rhythm? What was it like? Uh, oh, look at McLean, some wiggle. I don't know if I have that much wiggle. My yeah, goodness. He's down at 22. I mean, it's it's... It's different, right? Because you're sitting, you're watching the entire time, but you do have a different perspective. You've seen what, what's kind of happened out there. But when you come in, it's, it's a little different when you're up and when you're down, right? You come in when you're up, and, and the other team's demoralized, right? So you can kind of have your way and, and kind of do what you want. They know the game is over. Everybody's just trying to kind of get to the locker room. But when you're down, you come in, you can provide a bit of a spark for your team, especially if the game's a little close. Is it difficult because you may be throwing to guys that maybe you didn't or do you always throw to everyone on the roster because we're talking you know we're now deep on that actually three or four deep well, now with guys in the game if you're McLean right you're the backup you're, you're throwing the backups a lot right because John Rice Plumley has to get the reps with the starting guys so you you come in and you got a lot of backups See, these are guys that you've worked with all camp and in the springtime so you should be have a good rapport and be on the same page with them Closing in on the three-minute mark of our fourth quarter. Demarcus Bowman with the carry. And Bowman like he shot out of a cannon down to the 11-yard line. That'll be another first down for UCF, and they can burn some more clock. How much of a difference between what we've seen offensively from a Darren Hinshaw called offense as opposed to a Gus Malzahn called offense? I don't think it's a bunch. I mean, obviously, we love to see UCF against more competition, right, just to see how the offense is called. But the balance has been there. They've committed to the run game. And that's what he said he was going to do. That's what he said that Coach Gus Malzahn has always been known for, and he's going to keep that in motion, and he's done a very good job of it. Bowman, another chance. So right now, rushing yards, UCF is knocking on the door of 400. Passing yards, 329. It's a similar ratio to what they were last year. 228 rushing yards, 241 passing. So close to 50-50 last year. Very close. I think Gus Malzahn's got to go away from this game happy with the way it was called and, and just wants his quarterback to protect the ball a little bit more. Those are the only mistakes you, you would say, right? The defense played well, but the, the two interceptions and the fumble, that could, could be avoided, right? The fumble, just better ball security. The first interception, don't throw it, right? Use your legs, throw the ball away. And then the last one, just a better throw would, would have avoided that interception. I think he's happy with everything except those three things. Yeah, the three mistakes by Plumley, but was totally offset by the fact that he was <laughs> eye-opening with everything yeah. else that he did, with his legs and with his arm. Plumley's going to finish with 276 yards and the three touchdowns through the air 
and 88 yards on eight carries and a touchdown on the ground. Now the time is such. We're going to go under a minute here. It's third down at four. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Well, there's a touchdown. <laughs> So they go over a half a hundred, give the touchdown to Demarcus Bowman. And the lead is now 55 to 6. It's a nice job. The big fellas up front just moving guys. They, they've done it all night and, and the hole is clear. And then you know, once after contact, this, he does a very good job of falling forward. That's what you want to see from a good running back. A guy after contact, can you fall forward? Can you continue to turn your legs? He does a good job of getting in the end zone. Everybody's getting a piece. Demarcus Bowman now, five foot ten, 193 pounds, Lakeland, Florida, a junior that transferred from Florida. Colton Boomer. His eighth extra point. And with 54 seconds remaining, UCF leads by half a hundred. Interesting to note that the last time that Kent State played UCF, it was actually the last game that UCF played in the MAC. UCF then transferred, moved out of the MAC uh, over to Conference USA, and then, of course, the last decade in the American Athletic Conference. So the last game as a MAC member for UCF came against Kent State, and now the first game as a member of the Big 12 coming against Kent State for UCF. Yeah, very nice. And it's an uh, impressive fashion. This, this first game of the Big 12 against Kent State. I think Coach Melzon is going to be happy. You finally see a smile there. He, he's had a scowl on for the majority of this game, but uh, he saw a smile there pointing up at the score and, and whatnot. I think he's proud of the way his team came out and played. And, and you would say they did what they were supposed to do. And he, he also has things to clean up with the rocket launcher flying through the air. I think that Cape Canaveral. Not too far away. I know that the, a wonderful space program at UCF. Look at that. Scott. Good golly. Is that a thing? Oh, my gosh. That's a... Uh, that was a real rocket. UFO, man. Oh, goodness. No. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan man over here. Jeez. You have Cape Canaveral not too far away. away. That's actually a rocket launch. launch. Cape Canaveral. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. We saw something there. Yeah, that's really cool. Returnable. This is uh, Krishan McCray, who has returned every kick possible. Gets this one out to the 27. Tonight's hardest working player sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Plumley. He started early, hurling guys, getting the ball to the right guy, making plays with his leg, making plays with his arm, hyping the crowd. I mean, it, he showed all of his skills that he worked on all summer and spring. He put them on full display, and I said in the open, there are some question marks on, on this offense and, and I'm on this team with two new coordinators, but the one question that they think they have answered is Plumley, and I think that he showed that they were correct. Kent State, their final possession. Now for Kent State, they'll be better days. Brand new head coach that they're excited about. Hadn't done anything to kind of dim his star. Kenny Burns. Wow. That is a shot and a half. Pretty cool. How often do you get a full moon on a rocket launch? You sure it's not a UFO? No, it's just, just kidding. Just kidding. Jeez. <laughs> the green is coming off the wall. <laughs> Please return it. And that'll be the final play of the game. And it is going to be a victory for UCF in their debut as a Power 5 team. Welcome to the Big 12. I think you're going to be just fine, Gus Malzahn. UCF, the Knights, they win by 50 taking down Kent State. Kent State will try and rebound. They've got a game next week. Uh, they're going to take on Arkansas in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So another tough test for the very young team and a very young head coach. Uh, don't forget, big noon Saturday this weekend, Colorado and TCU. Coverage begins at 10 a.m. on Fox. 
And that is uh, just a wonderful way to get things started. Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. Well, I'm sure hope you enjoyed this one. It is uh, all UCF. They go to 1-0 on the year. For my partner, Devin Gardner, I'm Eric Collins. After the break, the Joel Klatt Show, Big Noon Conversations with Deion Sanders. I'm the team mascot. Boy, am I running late. Oh, what a hit. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to cover that might tank your season. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem like me. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. Oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Uh, Senor Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you... Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But this one's round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfecto! Red Bull gives you wings. Spot in the NL Wild Card against Yelich and the Brewers who have their sights set on the Central Crown. Or the AL's top contenders square off as Correa and the Twins battle Seager and the Rangers. It's Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. The Fox Sports app isn't just any sports app. It's your sports app. For the touchdown! Yeah, yours. Your teams. Your highlights. Your scores. Your stories. Just choose your favorites to get more of what you want. To the end zone! And of course, stream your teams live. The best part is free with your pay TV subscription. Grab your Fox Sports app today. Can one man change everything? I'm going to give you that. Build something out of nothing. Reinvent an entire team. Say that again. Turn a forgotten program into the talk of college football. Give old fans new hope. Can a one-win team upset a Big 12 powerhouse? We bring in the heat. Give Gus and Joel something to yell about. Wow! Can one man change everything? Baby, you best believe. We're about to find out. Give me my darn theme music. Big Noon is prime time. The most anticipated reunion of the summer is here. And the trumpet. As John Cena returns home to SmackDown. It's go time! Oh my God! Cena's here! The man, the myth, the legend. Cena is coming to town! It's SmackDown's biggest event of the summer. This is awesome! There is just no stopping Cena! Oh my God! All new Friday Night SmackDown. Sponsored by Progressive at 8, 7 central on Fox.